Some girls just want to watch World Cup. Jeff nailed another draft day. Nailed Play it. Top five has the 98. I got Jason more. Jason just loves some Kevin James. Fucking Kevin James. It's the history of bad. It's bad. It's the history of bad. It's so bad. It's the history of bad ideas. It's the history of bad. Oh, yeah. It's the history of Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun, and remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the History of Bad Ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 363. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. Ich lieben Blake. And, and, I'm, and I'm Jeannie. That's right. <laughs> Jeannie's back. Welcome, Jeannie. Hello, guys. Uh, I'm glad you're back. Um, last week, off the air, Jeff said he could not handle you during for three straight episodes. <laughs> He's much making my, this shit up. Much to my chagrin. And <laughs> I defended you and said, Jeannie is not that annoying. We got to have her back. And Jeff said, I have no. a really annoying laugh. I do. So it's totally fine. I get it. Oh, there's <laughs> m- much more worse annoying laughs out there than yours. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> uh, let's see here. So everyone's here. Well, Jim's not here. We're looking for him. And uh, Brian's not here yet, so we will get Brian on the show. Brian uh, uh, is running a little late tonight, so yeah, he's finishing up his uh, exams before holiday break. Oh, what what exams? Uh, beer exams. Oh, okay, good call. Good call. That's a good exam to take. Mm-hmm. I like beer exams. I like exams. Oh no, I don't. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Real quick, if uh, you're looking for good Christmas gifts, uh, if you're looking for unique Christmas gifts, go to Etsy, look up Untidy Venus uh, Shop, and uh, Steve and Izzy, well, actually Izzy, make some really cute things, uh, geeky things, uh, that you can buy. Pinned pillows, everything. So Stuffed uh, rat with Hobie initials on them? It could be, named Cole Ranch. Uh, it's Untidy Venus. And uh, it's on Etsy. You put in Hobie Pod as your coupon at checkout, and you save fifteen percent. Just to let you guys know, after after you get upcharged twenty five percent. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Uh, let's see here. So there you go, Jeannie. You got anything going on lately? Not really. I'm not allowed to do anything. Everything's closed down. So oh, that's I- right. You live in that dictator state up north. No. Ohio? Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Toledo. <laughs> Last time I looked we tried to give it to Michigan, city. but obviously we made that mistake. <laughs> actually, we actually fought Michigan so we could have it. That's, you know? that's your alternative history. You gave up the UP, like, duh. Yeah, we, we stole the UP from Wisconsin and gave it to Michigan so we could have Toledo. Can we give it back? <laughs> I'd be fine with living in Michigan for everything but insurance. Car insurance was oh, killer. So why are you shut down up there? Shitty drivers. Oh, it's uh we're just high levels in the county that I live in. So oh, okay. like we're not technically shut down, mm-hmm. but I like being alive and not sick, so I stay at home. <laughs> Good call. Good call. Yeah. I understand that. So, well, I have, you uh, should understand that you're doing it. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm running around everywhere. It's wonderful. Oh, wait, no. I baked a lot of cookies. We made chocolate haystacks, shortbread cookies, snickerdoodles, peanut butter blossoms, chocolate chip cookies, white chocolate macadamia cookies. And we have um, molasses cookies left to make. And. Oh. Uh, Leah wants to make macarons, so we'll we'll make those as well. Damn. Mm-hmm. Damn. We made uh, Buckeyes. A okay. candy, a Christmas candy, Jeff. Not a Christmas cookie. It is. You're yeah. right. 
And how do you make your Buckeyes? Do you um, use anything besides confectioner sugar when you mix it in with the peanut butter? I don't know. My wife did it. <laughs> I only use natural ingredients. So I usually pluck the eyes out of the deer that are killed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tasty treat. Just dip that right into chocolate. You got a great Buckeye. <laughs> Try it. All natural ingredients. Only the way I make them. Yeah. Same thing as I could see Blake going into the woods behind his house and just plucking the deer. <laughs> Here. Are you kidding me? I can't even shoot a deer. They're too pretty. I got venison in my fridge. I can't it's an ugly venison. deer. Yeah. Is there an ugly deer? There's ugly deer. Right? There's no such thing as ugly deer. They're all pretty like Bambi. Yeah, but they taste better. No, you get those. It's a good thing we shot Bambi mom and not Bambi. It's fine. I've yeah. seen a lot of ugly deer on the side of the road. <laughs> Once yeah, after they've been hit by cars. They're pretty <laughs> ugly after that point. Yeah. Are you driving to Pennsylvania? Because there was like 80,000 on the turnpike dead. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, we made Buckeyes. We made Snickerdoodles. It was the first time ever my wife tried them or uh, made them. And she, Snickerdoodles uh, are not only fun to eat, but also fun to say. They are. Yeah. Snickerdoodles. Mm-hmm. And then we made... Very- we made, um, I don't know, those round uh, round cookies with a Hershey Kiss in the middle. That's peanut butter blossoms. Oh, okay. They were also on my list. <laughs> what if you don't put peanut butter in them? Then you're making the wrong just chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> just a Hershey Kiss blossom. A cookie with a Hershey Kiss in the middle. <laughs> well, the problem is that what makes the peanut butter blossom work is that it doesn't spread. So it bakes, and then you push the blossom in. You push the kiss in mm. so that you smush the cookie, and it stays in the cookie. So for you to make another cookie, you have to make another cookie that doesn't spread, that will cook in a bowl. Mm. Man, it's so complicated. The, what if you put the kiss in before you cook it? Then it's going it to melt. melt and burn. <laughs> what yeah. if you just kiss the cook? Oh, That's a great idea. Yeah. Do your own. Especially if the yeah. cook is your wife. <laughs> make sure right. the, Blake, make sure the cook cooking. is not in the oven while you're kissing it, though. Don't That's do that. True. Yeah. You put your cook in the oven? Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel like after, that's a homicide there. <laughs> after we made all these, my wife goes, who the hell are we going to give these to? And I was me? Like, What's that? I'm like, me, you can give them to me. I, I, you know what? You may get some, uh, you may get, uh, some cookies here. Um, I sent up some to my friend in Marquette because he's a single male and doesn't get Christmas cookies. So I was like, here's some Christmas cookies. But I made him promise me that he would give some to his brother and his mom. Did you request sure. for cookies? Did you ask for dick pics back mm-hmm. or not? No, I don't ever need dick pics. <laughs> Just but there's a difference between needing and wanting. I don't ever want to see his dick pic. Like, <laughs> your friends. <laughs> Come on. There are people you can be friends with that are of the opposite sex that you don't ever really want to see naked. Well, I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking. Just yeah. asking. He's no. just a friend. Wanting um, and needing yeah. to see naked are two different things, though. <laughs> I've got a list of a few people I really need to see naked, but, you know. <laughs> is Chris Pratt one of them? Well, I mean, is he an option? Come on. Like, <laughs> he may be. Can I option the need to see Chris Pratt naked? You mm-hmm. get to see I Chris... feel like you need an ass drop here. <laughs> <laughs> you can see Chris Pratt naked, but then you also have to see John Noble naked. Do you know who John Noble is? No. He's pretty hot, too. Uh, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you say so. Jeff's I don't freaking know. Me out over, Jeff's freaking me out. He has his beard hat on, and I can't see his I lips can... move, and they're really fucking freaking me out over here. Well, we have him talking. <laughs> see, that's why this is safe to go out in public with. I like it. No, it doesn't cover your nose. It doesn't cover your nose. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope. Still does. <laughs> It's a Viking hat with a beard, a yarn beard for people on the podcast listening, not watching yeah. on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can follow us on Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter and look for our reviews on uh, nerdly.co.uk for my reviews. And our podcast is on there. Hello, Vicar. 
Good day, mate. Cheeky wanker. And you can follow us on our <laughs> Facebook page, History of Bad Ideas. Please do so. We have lots of good news over there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, How speak- many- What's that? You said you have lots of good news. Do you have any bad news? We do have some bad news on there. <laughs> we do. Just but walk just outside. I know what I'm looking for when I go there. Just open the Okay, hold on. I think Jim wants to join in, so I'm going to call him. <laughs> And he's like, did we start? Well, you're offline, according to Skype. <laughs> so did you make the beard or did you buy it? I bought he it. Crocheted. I don't make anything. You don't, you don't make anything at all? Do I look like I make things? Do I look like I make things? Well, yeah, because I've seen things you've made. <laughs> I've tasted I some think, of them. The I whole, don't think oh, there's hey, like hey. a book of someone <laughs> that does things. <laughs> like, I make things. No. I, I suppose I didn't mean my. I meant everything you know about me. Did you assume <laughs> that I am a maker of things? Do you make drinks? No, that's my brother. No, well, I'm like. Have, I feel like you've made something in your life. I probably I have. have. Speak oh, of yeah, your... okay. I am okay. a mess maker. There He's we. made a lot of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of problem with you people. Have. Speaking of brothers, Jim is on the line. Jim, how are you doing, buddy? Oh, thanks for calling. Jesus. (laughs) You're you're loud. loud. (laughs) Uh, According to Skype, you just got on. You were just green. (laughs) Well, I was sitting here on my phone for, oh, about 45 minutes, and you never called. You've only been on the air for 10. (laughs) So. You sound like you're sick or something. You got the Rona? Nope. Just you barely uh, hung over? A little hung over today. Yeah. Blake is just Jim. He's fine. Yeah. Uh, and I think intern Hackney's joining us now. We got a full boat. Hey, there's intern. Oh, hey. There you go. Now that everybody's <laughs> here, I, you guys can I take over. I'll see you later. <laughs> Blake's like, what the hell Blake doing? I'm out. He's got football to watch. Why? Why? I don't know. Uh, because it's football. He's I a just Cowboy got fan. the Ohio State Michigan game got canceled, and I was like, uh uh. Because there are a bunch no, no. of pussies but up the there. The good thing about that is there's a chance that because of that, Ohio State can't qualify to play in the conference championship game. I know. I, I got bitched at <laughs> by my friend, an OSU fan because now they. <laughs> There's a there's a possibility this is there will not be a national championship and you guys suck and I'm like I didn't call it I didn't say no <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm getting bitched at it's the only way it's the only way Michigan can uh, you know get one uh, over on the Buckeyes <laughs> well, here hey we go. take them where you can get them you know as, I salute it, Michigan it, for it, it doesn't matter you I know, think what they all play does. Up. They'll get voted into the playoffs anyways. Oh, yeah, they'll make the playoffs. It has nothing to do with the championship game for the big game. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the best part about the Ohio State-Michigan game being called because Michigan has a case of the COVID is that uh, that I don't we don't have to listen to Ohio State fans be obnoxious all week. So I'm. Uh, it's a yeah, win-win. Yes, we do. They're still going to be obnoxious. Oh. I'm like it's They're going to be twice as bad. Yes, yeah. I hope not. Did you not hear me say my friend already bitched at me? I had a 25 minute conversation where I got bitched at about the game being canceled. That's fine. It was the idiot doctor from Michigan that caused the Big Ten to shut down in the first place, anyways. Uh, time out. Did, yeah. did, did you get? I, I thought the guy Corona too? caused it, but okay. <laughs> no, it was the uh, the, the fear. <laughs> it, well. It was a uh, bad, bad info on a report in regards to long-term possible effects to heart conditions in states that mm-hmm. eventually at the time it came out, they thought it had some merit, but it has been debunked since. But, it, you know, it still could be something in the long run for some people. But, all you know, ultimately what it was, it, they, they canceled on some bad juju. They had bad juju up there? Yeah. Bad juju doctors. Bad juju bees. Allegedly. Allegedly. They threw the bones and prayed yeah. to the... Academians aren't necessarily smart. Um, Brian, how you doing down there, buddy? Oh, uh, hanging in there, man. 
How'd your exams go? We thought you're late they be- went- because of your exams, right? Your final exam, your midterms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> or nobody called me again. <laughs> you said you were going to be late, and it looks on Skype that it was yellow. So I don't want to hear it. You and Jim both had yellow on your things, and that means that you weren't there. Uh, green means go. Well, now it does. I was green. <sighs> you know what? I wasn't going to make any quibby jokes this week either, Brian. I was trying to turn over a new leaf. Now you're kind of ticking me off. I may have to. I may have to. He's okay with you giving quibby shit because it means you're going to donate money to his uh, charity of choice when he decides. What is your charity of choice? I'm choosing to wait to disclose that. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm letting this tab run as high as humanly possible. <laughs> We're only up at like then the- $15. The charity would be Brian needs a bourbon. <laughs> Brian's got Speaking of that, I participated in Brian the bourbon and a mask. pyramid scheme of, hey, let's do this exchange. If you recruit 12 people, then you'll get 12. Like, it's a pyramid scheme for whatever. For bourbon? For bourbon? But, like, three years ago, I did it with books like where people would send each other books to read Mm -hmm. and I didn't get any books. So I was like, Oh, that sucks. Like I, I bought a book and sent it to somebody and I didn't get any books. So then like last week, my cousin posted this, the, the whole thing it's on my Facebook page, but basically he had a guy like you, you send a bottle to one guy, you buy one bottle, send it to a guy and then you recruit people to respond and then they recruit people, and the people they recruit send you bourbon. So anyway, uh, I joined a pyramid scheme for uh, for bourbon this year. <laughs> I bought my one bottle and sent it out to my guy. And so far, I've re- received four bottles in return. So oh, man. it's working. So it makes people up care for the more books. about bourbon than oh, books. Oh, wow. <laughs> Apparently, yes. So uh, so I'm good. I'm, I'm really set on bourbon now. Which is really good. Sweet. It's awesome. So yeah, I, uh, pyramid schemes do work. <laughs> well, what the fuck of a pyramid? So if you're on top, if you're on the top of the pyramid, <laughs> hey, I'm Jim like, isn't that the best place to be? I don't know where I'm at oh, in, the, in the pyramid, but just, just got, wait until they, bourbon, so. just wait until you guys start buying Tupperware. <laughs> Uh, th- no, that, that, that won't happen. No, Brian's got, Brian, uh, Brian got four things of bourbon, but he also has 1800 packs of supplements in his garage so that he's got to sell. So hey, it's going to be, a yeah, what's the, what's, what's that, what's that, what's that bullshit milk, uh, powder shit that was big in the, it's still big in those, uh, pyramid schemes that you end up buying the supplements. Slim fast. Herbal life. Yeah, that's what <laughs> oh, it is. Herbal life. Yeah. Got 18. He's got 1,800 <laughs> packages of Herbalife, but he got four bottles of bourbon out of it. In his defense, he also has six different flavors of Herbalife, so it, it's going to sell itself, Like It's fine. It's, it's fine. It really does. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> so did you get 12 recruits uh, in the, the pyramid scheme? or uh, I believe I had... I had six. All right. So... So those six will send my contact bottles of bourbon. And then the six people that I recruited, how many ever people they get to respond, will send me bourbon. And they at least got four, huh? So, so far I've, I've gotten four. Mm-hmm. I can't. It really does sound like a pyramid scam. It, oh, it is. He said it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> By definition, Eventually someone's getting fucked. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, it's whoever whoever says like, "Yeah, I'm in," and then that person gets somebody buys a bottle of bourbon and sends it to them, and then they don't do it. Then that's yeah. where the you yeah, know. Yeah. So you I go. spent forty bucks and I got four bottles of bourbon and I'm happy. So yeah, better than the book. It reminds me of that uh, of the uh, the office uh, episode where Jim. 
Like where Michael Phelps t- talking about it, and he just draws the pyramid around it. <laughs> it's not a pyramid scheme, Jim. Jim. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's a multi-level <laughs> phone <laughs> cards. That's what it was. It's a multi-level it was, marketing. Yep, yeah. it was phone cards. That's right. <laughs> uh, Jim, how are you doing over there, buddy? Hey. <laughs> He's become fuzzy, guys. <laughs> Waka, Waka, <laughs> uh, Jim, would you like to yes. would you like to start our long list of breath of silences this week? There's a few of them, yeah. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so breath of silence for uh, uh, the creator of Slim Jims, Lon Adams. Lon Adams. Did he finally snap? <laughs> Ran into a tree. Breath of silence. Okay, who else? Snap to sleep. Chuck, Chuck Yeager passed away. Uh, pilot and the first person to break the sound barrier. Yep. He was 97. Uh, yep. Should we do a breath of silence or should we get incredibly loud with a sonic boom? To... Let's, let's do a sonic boom of silence. Wasn't he also like a catcher in the Major League Baseball? No. He was a <laughs> test pilot. <laughs> oh, he was a pitcher. Can we do a sonic boom? Boom. Boom. Thank boom. you. Boom. Thank you. And then one of uh, an actress, one of Jason's favorite movies of all time, Natalie DeSalle Reed, star of the movie Baps, passed away too. <sighs> Breath of silence. Uh, she was in some other good films too, though. She was actually in good films. Oh, yeah. Like Baps. She was in Diary of Mad Black Woman, uh, which was actually, uh, who's that guy that makes those films? Tyler Perry. Yeah, Tyler Perry. It actually it was probably one of his better films. Um, it, 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 it was, a, you know, a nice little melodrama going yeah. on there, and then Medea. Medea entered the picture. Yeah. And like, if they took Medea out, it would be an enjoyable little movie. And we said that multiple times while we were watching. <laughs> you know, and we said that before we even knew who Medea was. This yeah. was our first uh, exposure to Medea. <laughs> if this crazy lady would get out of the film, it would be funny. It would be good. <laughs> uh, yeah, th- man, we got uh, we got hit hard this week. Hit hard. So, yeah, uh, uh, breath of silence to the Cincinnati Cyclones season. Minor league hockey team. Uh, they opted out for the season. In all honesty, how do most of these minor league hockey teams, they're not going to make money without ticket sales. There's no way. 300 no. people, there's just, it's no fee, there's no feasible way for them to. No. To a, lot of, a lot of that's going to be a lot of the COVID testing and stuff because a lot of that's expensive and they're just not going to be able to afford it. Yeah. I mean. I and, mean, they, they straight up said the, the limitation on mass gatherings, the 300 people per game, mm-hmm. they just. They couldn't do it. Like it they wouldn't bring was, enough people, right, enough revenue in to cover all that is expensive. Yeah, which is which is a bummer. Uh, they did try to go with uh, selling uh, tickets, individual tickets for a thousand dollars a piece. It did not go over well, so that's why they had to scrape it. So. But maybe they should get into a Brian's beer. bourbon so. scheme. <laughs> wait, wait, what did you say, Jeff? <laughs> they would have dollar beer nights every night, though. So for a thousand dollars, you could then get the right to buy a dollar beer that's true they did have hard pretzel night though too and that's just not a good combination (laughs) well dozen egg night was a flaw yes it was (laughs) uh yeah i saw that about cyclones that really sucks um did they finish last season um i don't think they played they did no did they they did I am pretty well, they sure they did not. In 2019. Yeah, I don't think they did. That really Because, yeah, it took till the, what, till June for the NHL, July maybe for the NHL to do their yeah. five, uh, playoffs. And NHL's not coming yeah. back till they're, January, I think? 13th. January 13th. Yeah. Maybe. Or a cool, no, it's official. It was official? Oh, okay. According to my inside source. Within the NHL. Gotcha. Is it 
It hasn't been officially announced yet, then? It has not, no. But okay. it has been agreed upon as that will be the uh, the start date of the season, and they're going to be playing 56 games. Oh, okay. Will be, will, will be the, the schedule. It's going to be interesting because they're not in a bubble this year, the NHL. So yeah. the playoffs, they had a bubble and – well, the last couple of weeks of the season, and but with the playoffs, they basically were at two, three locations or two, whatever. At two locations. Two locations, and basically they kept yeah. them surrounded in a hotel and have a good day. Uh, um, which, which was funny because they said that there was a lot of uh, bad tempers flying around the hotels because they would play their rivals in that game and then go to back to the hotel and see them back in the <laughs> walking back to the rooms. And they said uh, it w- it was not always pleasant <laughs> in the elevators. So. Hockey players are a different breed, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jim, did you watch anything good this week or bad? Whichever one. I started watching Star Girl. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That came out. Okay. Better than Black Lightning? <laughs> yes. Uh, Black <laughs> How Lightning. How could it be worse? Stop it. <laughs> Stop I, it. it could, the only thing that could have made Black Lightning worse mm-hmm. was if it was on Quibi. <laughs> oh, put money in the jar. That's his second. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, now, now Brian wants to hurt Jim. I was like, it no. wasn't good with a 30-minute episode. It's not going to be better with a five-minute episode. I, it might I mean, be. If, well, you're if, right. It might if, be. If you can it find takes all five the minutes. shit out and just concentrated. Yeah. Here's what we're doing. Uh, Black Lightning is actually ending this coming season. Season four is the last season. Oh, no. Yeah. It, uh, no, good news is it lasted three seasons longer than Quibi. So, I mean, it worked out well. Uh, a dollar in the jar. Uh, Jim, uh, so what do you think about Stargirl? It's. Through three episodes, it's entertaining. Okay. So they're still introducing all the characters and building up the new uh, uh, justice society. Uh, society, yeah. So it's I, not a league anymore. No, it's a different. It's a different group. Uh, justice Society and Justice League it's is different. Oh, so they Justice League's trademark. So they got to go with Justice That's Society. Right. Uh, no, it's both more. It's both. They're both uh, DC. Mm-hmm. Justice yeah. Society was what that was before Justice League, wasn't it? Yes. Originally in the yes. 1940s. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it still has like Hawkman, Green Lantern, Flash were all original members of it. Um, I would say the old the, Flash and old Green Lantern. Yeah. Alan, yeah. Um, shoot, Alan, whatever the guy's name is. That was at the Flash. That was actually. Faster than everybody else, Jay. <laughs> uh, Jay Garrick. No, yeah. no, he wasn't faster than everybody. Well, he was faster than everybody else at the time, but then other people came around that were faster than him. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, I'll go back to Star Girl here in a second. Uh, Grant Gust- Gustin, who's from Flash, the CW show, um, who plays Flash. He was on Ridiculousness today, the episode I was watching, and they were talking oh about my God. Ta- no, no, they were talking about time travel, and <laughs> even Grant Gustin's like. Um, in the show, Flash has used time travel a little too many times. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Uh, Jim, I would say Stargirl. Uh, I did reviews for that for Nerdly. Uh, I will say episode six or seven is when it really starts picking up. Um, there's about five episodes of like them building slowly but surely, and then it starts picking up. Uh, and Luke Wilson's fun, isn't he? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Luke Wilson. He's the bad Wilson brother. Is and, there and, Amy, and Amy Smart. Yes, Amy Smart's in it. Uh, Jim, did you watch Swamp Thing? The C- no, I did not. Okay. How I about have... Wild Things? Ooh, Wild Things. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Swamp Thing's on my DVR. I just haven't uh, watched it yet because that's not coming back. So. Uh, did you watch any of the other ones on that were on DC's uh, streaming platform, Jim, uh, like uh, Titans or Doom Patrol? I watched uh, Doom Patrol. Okay. Um, I watched that. Was getting ready. To, I haven't started Titans yet, but I was going to watch it. Okay. I watched, they're all with 
they're on HBO Max now. So mm-hmm. yeah, I watched the first episode of the Titans. I think they broadcast that about two weeks ago or something. I suppose to hopefully get people interested in HBO Max. Oh. Uh, I'm like, I have HBO Max. I love Doom Patrol. When they went to the Sex Ghosts, it was hilarious. Sex Ghosts? I'm in. Yeah. What? Um, uh, HBO Max is, if you buy if you pay for six months ahead of time, uh, you get 20% off right now. So, uh, oh, next- so they wait until right after we get it. Jeez. <laughs> I'm... Uh, Picking it up uh, next week. I'm going to start it next week because uh, I'm off the following week, uh, next 11 days after that. So I thought, ah, it'd be a good time. But, yeah, they have 20% off if anybody's looking. So, um, Jeannie, have you yes. seen anything new? Uh, No. I watched The Mandalorian and, uh, like, Coco, like, nine times because it's Leah's favorite movie right now. Coco's, She's 16. Coco's a really <laughs> good film. Coco's a great film. It is, but, you know... You expect to watch it like once, maybe twice every six months, mm-hmm. not four times in three days. <laughs> this is the era children, of COVID. So that changes. She's 16. Oh, you're saying she's not allowed to have her young childish, uh, childish stuff come through? No, but you're supposed to like watch something and move on to something else. Not watch something and be like, I'm going to watch that again. That happens when you're younger. Like, I remember babysitting my cousin. First experience I ever had. The only time I ever babysat anyone until I shot a baby out of me. Um, She she watched Dumbo, like, ten times in, like, in the day. Like, I was just like, can I never watch Dumbo again? You should not watch Dumbo anytime, to be honest with you. It's a horrible film. It was her obsession at the time, and it it was just start over, start over, start over. I'm like, we're watching anything but Dumbo. Uh, uh, well, if your daughter was doing her online schooling, she wouldn't have time to watch Coco ten times. She was she she's got all of her schooling caught up. Actually, her teachers has praised her for her ability to actually do Log her on. homework and get it in on time. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> She's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Mandalorian no, was good. a pretty pretty good episode this week. Yeah, yeah Boba really Fett's good. too old and fat to fit into his armor. He looks pretty funny. <laughs> I noticed that too, Blake. <laughs> it happened. Yeah, I'm but glad he was a badass. I like when he took his weapon and was just like pew 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 whack whack. Like it was nice watching it. The Tuscan Raider I'm, staff. Yeah. Is there mm-hmm. is there anything more useless than stormtrooper armor? <laughs> <laughs> it, it does. I mean, crack. seriously. I mean, it's people without the armor get shot the armor? and survive. People with the armor get shot and die, <laughs> or they get whacked, like you, you, know, you were just talking about. You know, with the you know Mandalorian and his big stick. I mean, what's the point of stormtrooper armor? I don't understand. I, I did like nothing this. beats a big stick. <laughs> I, 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 Blake, I did like the one stormtrooper that was leading the tr- the group. You know, he took it very seriously. Everyone else did not. It, he looked like the guy in college, like he was in charge of the school, uh, the team project. Everyone else was like, eh, yeah, whatever. He's like, go, go, go. And then they all get shot. No, forget it. Yeah, you mean the second lieutenant? In the, yes. Uh, in the squad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. It was, it, it was pretty good. And then, and then uh, I did find it, you know, he got his armor. I'm like, oh, I'm surprised he can still fit. <laughs> And then I looked at it, I was like, what's the use of just having that small breastplate? <laughs> it kind of looked like Chris Farley putting on a sports jacket. It just didn't work <laughs> too well. Yeah. Fat mercenary in a little <laughs> best. See, I'm, I'm kind of surprised to find out that Boba Fett was like overweight or whatnot because I figured all the digestive juices from the Sarlacc would have at least, you know, burned away half his body. I was like, well, what? did they actually address how he survived the Sarlacc? Uh, they did not yet. They did not. They did uh, in some uh, comic book or something at some point. That's, do you know who yeah. saved him, Jeff, in the, from the Sarlacc pit? Who helped uh, him? The third guy who got thrown in? No, no. He got, <laughs> he, he got pulled out by Dengar. 
Well, Dengar's the coolest. There you go. Toilet He's cooler than head. Boba Fett. Toilet paper head. Um, cooler than Boba Fett. And not to spoil anything, but after, you know, the things happen with the bad guys, uh, I will say, Blake, as soon as, uh, you know, Boba Fett and the other uh, person were like, yeah, we're joining teams, you know, we're, we'll, we'll help you out. I looked at yeah. my son because we watch them together, and I was like, Mando's getting a team. And then he goes back and he starts recruiting. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's get some of these guys. <laughs> that yeah, was I want to know who the cheerleaders are for them. Wasn't he looking for the uh, Bill Burr? Was it yes. Bill Burr's yeah. guy? Yep. Yeah. That's what I, I was like. Bill Burr's coming back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's going to be I'm their a, pony boy? I'm, I'm a big fan of Bill no. Burr. Oh, Billy Burr there. That's a good call. I don't know who's going to be their pony boy. I don't know, Jeff. Mm. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, Jeff, what did you watch? Anything good? I started watching Rick and Morty. Oh, okay. And? Like, I for have, the first time ever? I, for the first time ever. I was unable to watch it before. I was like, where have you been? What's it well, on? I've heard about it. It's on HBO Max. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think before it was on Hulu, but I never had Hulu, so I couldn't watch it there. So, and I, I don't even know what. Oh, I like it. It's, it's okay. funny. It it mm-hmm. fits my sense of humor. Okay. Get swifty. You son of a bitch! You're in. <laughs> uh, Brian, have you watched anything? I have. Oh, what'd you have? What'd you watch, Brian? Uh, I watched the third. Uh, <laughs> How to scam people out of bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost Brian. No, oh, I was gonna say, is he pissed off at me again? Oh, of course. Him. I think we lost. Yeah, him. interrupted him. We didn't lose him. He just went on mute and oh. turned off his camera. Oh. Now, now Brian won't join the show. Come on, Brian. <laughs> Brian won't play the show. So we're doing the Magic Johnson thing there for a second. Uh, Blake, what have you watched real quick? I uh, finished Barbarian. Eh. And? <laughs> it, was, it was good. I liked it. Okay. What is Barbarian Honestly. on? It's on Netflix. Oh. How many episodes? It's German. It's it's made in Germany. So, okay. uh, if you have a problem with people uh, having dub overs for uh, vocals, in you know, I, I talked to one person who, who said they couldn't watch it because the English was all dubbed. And or, I'm like, well, do they have it the is kind of for it to be in German with you reading subtitles? Yes, but you have to read subtitles anyways because the uh, Romans speak Latin. So they're they're subtitled. Ah. And so the natural Germanic tribes, you know, speak English so that you understand each other. But mm-hmm. what is pretty cool is uh, it, it's, it's a good little miniature Game of Thrones replacement. You know, if you're looking for, you know, something a little along those lines. And so there's dragons. It, that was no, no dragons. Okay. No dragons. More. It, it's based on. The Tourborg, you know, forest battle. So it's, you know, it's non, it's fiction based on nonfiction, you know, is there, walk, is there white walkers? Not yet. Okay. But, uh, what is, what is interesting is, is the fact that, uh, it got, it'll start to get, it, it's once you can get past the subtitles and the dubs, you know, mm-hmm. it, you, once you get used to it, it gets better. I think maybe for some people, but, um, I did like it in the fact that it's got some good plots and it's got, when I say Game of Thronesy, you've got, you know, people working against each other and scheming and all that kind of Definite stuff. Definite incest, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, yeah, well there's a little bit of uh, <laughs> sexy, sexy, sexy time. But um, <laughs> what do I do well, like? I think it's you sold me. I'm going to go, I'm going to go put this on my Netflix and watch it. You should. And, and wait until episode six, because episode six, it gets really good. And that was going to be my uh, uh, tagline for what I watched this week. Mm-hmm. And the reason episode six was really good is because it's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to watch I was the like, whole wow, thing. Wow, this is really this episode is really good. And I'm like, okay, what's the next one? It starts because you watched this. Here's the queen. So I'm is like, there only what? six episodes total? Yeah, oh, episode. Are they after? Yeah, is it a mini series or will it come back for a season two? Well, it is a German miniseries, and uh, there's been enough 
uh, interest in it that they've signed off for a season two. Okay. Yeah. So what was really cool is that uh, Thuznelda, you know, who's the uh, Germanic uh, lady who Jean, her name's Jean Gorsad. And uh, she's like, you know, you, you know, the, what is pretty cool is like the Germanic, you know, tribes would dress up for battle, you know, kind of like interesting barbarian, you know, dress. And, and so, you know, she's taken on a persona of a seer, you know, a, 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 or a crone. And she's like, in the, you know, this cool, all black, you know, soot, you know, I'm like, man, that was pretty hot. Yeah, that's my take. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the crone is pretty hot. All right. <laughs> It's not usually the one people are attracted to, but all no, right, was, well, she, you got me excited about this. Like yeah. history and is one yeah. of my, like I'm a big history buff and this time period specifically. So yeah, I'll watch it. It, is, and I'll, it is. Oh yeah. I'll, it is really cool. And there's some, you know, really cool, uh, plots, a little, you know, a couple of things are a little cheesy, but the overall plots are pretty cool. I like, right. you know, I'm going to so. come back and tell you how I feel about this. Okay. Brian, and if she's disappointed, she will take it out on you. I, uh, yes. Brian, before you were rudely interrupted, please. Yeah. Tell Sorry. Me, tell me who you got. What, what have you watched? Come on. Give me something. Uh, um, I watched the first three episodes of Big Sky. Ah, good call. Okay. I'm on that too. Uh, uh, really digging it so far. Yeah. Uh, Not I mean, I didn't really know what to expect, but is it a little blue? surprise in the first episode, but. Uh, I was going to tell you the ending of the first episode. We won't do spoilers because it's it a pretty big cloudy. twist. But <laughs> what the heck is going on here? <laughs> what is Big Sky on? ABC. ABC. That's did why you, I have no clue what it is. Did you see the twist coming, Brian? At the Brian at the end of the first episode. No. No. What the twist? Not a. Not at all. <laughs> In bed, bra. Twist. Well, well, let me preface that with saying I did know because Erica told me oh. because she started it before me, but it still happened. And I was like, oh, no, wait, what? <laughs> it, it, uh, did they kill off Ned not. Stark in the first episode? Ned Stark? <laughs> yes, Ned Stark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically. Big, uh, so, big yeah, I watched the first three episodes of that. It, and it's basically for people that don't know, it's um, two uh, two teen uh, two girls are kidnapped driving to Montana uh, to visit the one's boyfriend, two sisters. And uh, it's basically breaks down that there's a serial killer that's a trucker and he, uh, he may or may not be working with people, uh, more people involved in the city of Mon- or in the state of Montana. And uh, it, it, it's it's uh, good. And then the um, the police are kind of like, eh, whatever. Uh, So there's uh, two detectives or three detectives that start looking for it. Um, But the two female private detectives, private detectives, sorry, says a private detective teams up with an ex cop. Yeah, there's two female uh, private detectives that run a business and uh, the one slept with uh, slept with the uh, other woman's uh, husband. So there's some tension there. So there's some issues there. But it does have Ryan uh, Felipe, Felipe, Felipe. How do you say it? Felipe. Yeah, I'm going with that. Yeah, and his abs, <laughs> his abs. Uh, I'm about to say you say it has Ryan Philippe like that's a bonus or a good I like thing. Him. I like him. Uh, are you caught uh, up? On, are you caught up on transplant? Brian, me? Yeah, so I've never watched it in my life. Oh, I thought you were going <laughs> was, to. I'm sorry. Was, I, uh, my bad. <laughs> was Big Sky kind of Twins Peakish? Because it looks kind of Twins Peakish. I would say a little bit. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, not overly, but there there are some undertones that I could see that comparison, yeah. All right, cool. I don't think it says... So weird. it has a log lady? It what? So it has a log lady in it? Uh, yes. <laughs> There's lots of pie. Lots of pie. The, the Twin Peaks had a character who's called the log lady because she walked around carrying a log the whole time. Oh. <laughs> mm. I never watched Twin Peaks. Well, I don't. I don't want to give you any spoilers, Jeff. So I won't tell you if there's a log lady or not. You should watch the entire series because the log lady's in there somewhere. Find her <laughs> in Big Sky. Blue Sky. In Big Sky. 
Um, what else? you watch anything else, Brian? Uh, yeah, I watched the third uh, recently released uh, filmed in Cincinnati movie on Netflix uh, with Bruce Willis in it, <laughs> uh, Marauders. Why? It's got. Uh, it's actually got a really good cast. It's uh, Bruce Willis. Uh, Batista's in it. Yep. Uh, Christopher Maloney, and um, I can't remember. Oh, um, shit! I can't remember the other guy's name. Uh, John. I will say it, uh, Maybe Stephen something. Uh, totally. It's much better than Hard Kill. Not that that means anything. It's a very low barometer, but. <laughs> Um, the lowest of it all. Was re- it's, it, it, it was mostly filmed downtown, so it was really cool seeing like the shots that they got. But it was weird because downtown was considered, in the movie, was considered Westchester. <laughs> like they would say, like, we're going to the, like, because it was about bank robbery. So they're like, yeah, we're, we got to go to the Westchester branch. And then they're like on Elm Street. I'm like, wait, that's not right. Westchester <laughs> doesn't have skyscrapers, what are you? right? Uh, so, but but that was, it was actually, inter- I mean, it was watchable. Uh, Batista's pretty good in it. Uh, that was, I believe, that's the one that was filmed in Cincinnati. That my coworker's house was used as one of the pre- uh, actors' houses in it. Um, nice. They used the sub- it was a we- it was a subdivision in Westchester, basically, <laughs> and mm. the subdivision. Um, people got paid, but it wasn't much. Like, I think she got yeah. decent, but nothing great. And then basically they gutted the house because they were putting lights in that because you had to have bright enough lights into the ceilings. And that. obviously the company, the Hollywood, uh, the movie company, they obviously replaced everything in that, that they ch- took out. But, uh, she sure. said she, they had to leave literally, I think it was for two weeks, I think of the time and go somewhere else. But, um, yeah, it was a, it was a uppity Westchester area. Uh, so, huh. but yeah, it was just kind of interesting. One of my coworkers, I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, she's like, our subdivision was picked. And then basically you got to volunteer and she got paid. I, I think it was 10 to 20,000 total, uh, on top of them fixing up the house. <laughs> Correct. So did they yeah. make the house better? Like they didn't put it back exactly the way, you know, if she said, <laughs> Well, you might as well paint this and... (laughs) Yeah, here's your house back. Thanks. Hey, wait a minute. They put back the knob and tube wiring and everything. (laughs) (laughs) Your your house is going burned down next week. My bad. (laughs) No, no. I mean, hey, for ten to 20000 hell yeah. I mean, that's not bad at all. Um, Do it. Let's go. Um, But she said that they had, like, the whole subdivision was not really happy because there were so many... Uh, stop vehicles and, yeah. and yeah so uh, uh, believe, that would be rough i'd imagine but i believe it was marauders i think that was the one that she, uh she said um uh brian uh it was um the one actor adrian grenier is that who you're thinking yeah, about from yeah from oh uh, aquaman yeah aquaman <laughs> from entourage oh yes okay, okay. so uh, so yeah, at one point we had three of the top 10, uh, most popular Netflix movies were streamed, uh, the, in the top 10, three of them were filmed here in Cincinnati at one point. <laughs> hard kill dropped out really quick though. That's okay. <laughs> Everybody it was a hard pass. <laughs> uh, I watched, um, Freaky, the new, um, body switching, um, film. Uh, horror movie, Vince Vaughn's a serial killer, the butcher. He switches bodies with the teenager in it um, and basically I've starts killing spree. previews for that, yeah. Uh, my wife, was uh, she works out of the house, and so she was working Saturday night, and all the kids were in bed, and I was like, there's nothing really else on. I really wanted to see Freaky. So it's still in theaters, um, but yeah, I rented it, and you know what? I enjoyed it. It was, um, wasn't great, but it wasn't bad either. It was funny. It was like Mean Girls mixed with Scream. Uh, kind of um, mixed with freaky. Wow, you sold me on that. I like Mean Girls. Mean Girls is funny. Um, it's a scream. Oh, shut it. Um, but yeah, I mean, and Vince Vaughn actually looked like he gave a shit. So that was kind of nice that he actually tried. Because um, he needs money. 
maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. So a uh, review will be on nerdly.co.uk this week. Uh, just let you guys know. So there you go. Uh, hey, Jim, are you awake? Yep. Would you like to do the poll of the week? <laughs> hey, what about you, Jason? Didn't you finish Cobra Kai yet? No, I'm on season two still. Uh, halfway through. I haven't. I didn't right. watch any other ones. I watched Freaky instead of uh, catching up on Cobra Kai. I apologize. It will be done this right. weekend. I promise. There's no other okay. movie that came out that I wanted to see. <laughs> I believe the season three trailer is dropping tomorrow, if what I uh, I read today. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Jim, you want to do the poll of the week? Okay, a Twitter poll of the week. Since Warner Brothers is releasing their new films to HBO Max, which one are you most excited to watch? We had Wonder Woman 1984, The Suicide Squad, Dune, and Godzilla vs. Kong. I really think this, somebody got on here and voted yeah. like 35 times. Yeah, it, I'm it, surprised it at these results. Sense. Uh, at 14% and fourth is the Suicide Squad. At 16% and third was Dune. Ugh. And then the other two, first and second, 51% to 19%. 51% Godzilla versus Kong. 19% Wonder Woman 1984. I love How many votes did we end up with? 50-something? Uh, I'll check. Hey, were these votes certified in Georgia? Arizona. Oh, that explains it. Pennsylvania. I, have, I currently have a, uh, I'm suing and going to the Supreme Court to get these uh, votes taken away. This, um, and, this, <laughs> this was 96 votes. I think there's voter fraud going on. 96 and because it, there's, no there's no way, way to lose. No way. There's no way Kong and Godzilla should get over half the votes. I love Godzilla versus, like, I love the new Godzilla films and Kong and that. I don't even think this would be my pick on here. I mean, I like Godzilla versus Kong, but I, I'm shocked that it won by that much. So uh, I thought Wonder Woman would take it. Or That was not my vote. Or as Besada Keek said, Lord of the Rings with in the desert, Dune. Um <laughs> It's not even close to the same story. Come on, guys. Oh, oh, I was about ready to argue that, oh, you picked the wrong movies, and then I looked at all the movies that Warner Brothers was releasing, and I'm like, I'm not looking forward to any of these. So <laughs> I guess it's Wonder Woman. Warner Brothers announced uh, like last week, I think it was the week after we aired, that they are, or the day after we aired, I'm sorry, uh, that they are releasing all their 2021 films onto HBO Max next year. Which has not pleased a lot of people. Um, Chris, like theater not, owners? Chris not Burton? one Christopher Nolan. Nolan. The theater yeah, so Nolan. A lot of people with financial stakes in the movies that they are uh, doing this with are not happy. So, like if you're right. supposed to be getting a share of the box office or whatnot, and there is no <laughs> box office. <laughs> so the shitty part is legendary films... Uh, who produces um, or who makes Godzilla vs. Kong, it was a $200 million budget, and they paid for 75% of it. They were in talks to sell the rights to Netflix, Godzilla vs. Kong. Legendary was. And Warner Brothers stepped in for $200 million. Warner Brothers stepped in and said, nope, you can't do that. We're not agreeing to it. And literally the next day, they, said, they came out and said that everything's going to HBO Max. <laughs> so they said, <laughs> read my lips. No streaming service next day. Hey, HBO Max. <laughs> no, no, they didn't say no streaming service. Just they not said Netflix. Not yeah. someone else's streaming service. <laughs> we get well, that makes sense because Warner, Warner Brothers it has uh, TV, you know, network TV mm -hmm. stake. So why would they let Netflix steal that? I know, but mm -hmm. Legendary. Oh, they, all, yeah, Warner Brothers owns HBO. So Legendary yeah, Films is go. in the process of suing them basically for this. Uh, or because mm -hmm. they said they want something out of this cut because they're going to lose $150 million otherwise. So, uh, yeah. So there you go. God, um, 
I don't know if all of them are coming to uh, Warner or HBO Max after this is all said and done. I think a lot of them are being released on HBO Max at the same time in theaters. Oh yeah, so they, I think, I think they're and they're doubling. being released for a month. Like, yes. Yeah. They're, af- they're after all, the month is up, then they're not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. They're all doubling down on trying to, you know, cut their losses in the theaters. You know, with the current situation. Yeah, because I didn't realize that Jeff, that Wonder Woman. Like you said, all of the new ones are coming out for 31 days, and then they're leaving HBO Max until yeah. their rights can go back to a streaming service, uh, yeah. back to HBO. Um, so there you go. And, and apparently HBO Max is disappointed in the amount of subscribers they have, so they're trying to boost their subscription rate. Or not the rate, but the, the, the rate of people subscribing. So I think it, I, this, they think that's why they part of the reason they did this was, you know, because the new head of Warner Brothers wants to boost the, their own streaming service. Uh, Jeff, who is it? What company? Yeah. What company? Warner Brothers. There you go. Uh, ah. I didn't know we were watching the producers. <laughs> But I will let you know that uh, I, th- I think, Jeff, you're going, aren't you, on uh, the day after Christmas to see Wonder Woman? Yep, we bought tickets in the theater. Oh, yep. nice. Nice. Uh, you'll probably still have a private theater, <laughs> depending on what time you go. Uh, uh, going in the afternoon. The afternoon. There uh, were no tickets sold when we bought them, so... It will be interesting because, Jeff, you used to work at the movie theater. That was a big night, Christmas night. You wonder if it's going to be that again. It won't. You know, not, to, not this year, anyway. You know, no. Like, well, we, we drove by on Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and there was actually a decent amount of uh, cars in the lot. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's good. That's good to see. Uh, Not like a normal busy day would have been, but there was, for for the for the time it was, yeah, like the lot was about half full, which they hadn't seen anything like that before. <laughs> yeah, since, since the the shutdown. Yeah, one of the parents on my uh, son's soccer team, uh, he was talking to me last week, and he said that him and three other families, because you can have up to twenty people, rented a movie theater. Uh, at the one closest to us for ninety nine dollars, and it was um, what do you call it? They were going to watch the cartoon version of The Grinch, I think it was, uh, for ninety nine dollars. And he's like, "It can't, you can't beat it. It's twenty five bucks for a family, you know, for us." So he's like, yeah. "For a private theater, he's like, it's really nice. I mean, for twenty five dollars, you can't beat that." Cartoon version of The Grinch, yeah, with the, the half hour. No, 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 no. No, probably the, the new movie. one that just came out last year. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yes, the half the hour show. Cover match, not the Boris Karloff. Right? No, no, no. Yeah. Um, it's actually the where I asked the my group members what movie they wanted to watch for Christmas because the week of Christmas we have such a short week. We actually have Christmas Eve off and Christmas, so we only have one group. And I'm like, we're not going to actually do anything like meaningful. Mm-hmm. Let's watch a movie. What mo- movie do you want to watch? And that's the movie they picked. You know what? I was pleasantly surprised. It's actually a, a pretty decent cartoon. I actually like it, I think, better than the half hour one. Um, okay. So it's better than the clips they showed when promoting the movie yes. when it was in theaters. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because those clips did not make me want to see that movie. No, and we made fun of it, Jeff, you and I, uh, you know, with it. And it, it was a lot better than I thought. Um so just, you could do a lot worse on Christmas movies. Let's just say that. Uh, yeah, yeah, like the it's Polar a wonderful Express. life. Uh, <laughs> Polar Express. Uh, Blake, let's do some listener feedback over there, Chief. Yeah, some listener feedback brought to you by Rigged Elections. Oh. Obviously, Godzilla versus Kong is fake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Demandery. Uh, Let's see. We start off with this uh, this one guy. What's his name? Number one fan. Big D. A-Pans. Formerly known as. 
Seven. Dad. Lower than me. He says, does the CGI for Clifford the Big Red Dog look worse than the original design for Sonic the Hedgehog? And I like how you put a little picture reference in here for us. Well, I figured otherwise nobody would understand. So I had to make it easy for you guys. In turn, you did a good job on that. You are. Uh, rumor has it that intern, you're up for a floppy for best intern of the year. Just saying, just saying. So, um, I, it, it looks creepy. The Clifford, the big red dog. Help me out here, people. It looks. It does. It does well, look good. It, he just looks creepy. like a dog. He's yeah. a dog the size of a fucking house. How do you not make that creepy? Yeah. How do you make that less creepy? I mean, you needed to put a house next to him. I mean, all you, you did was imagine? put another smaller dog next to him. So how big his poops are? <laughs> big as a couch. That, no, that was my big issue. As, as a house, a tiny house. No, he's as big as a house. The poops are as big as a couch. Mm-hmm. Who cleans that up? I mean, that's got to be like you only can use it for so many gardens in the area. It looks like just somebody just on. took like red food coloring and and rubbed their, mm-hmm. rubbed it on their dog. Yeah. That's what it looks like, yeah. It looks like his, his poops can't be bigger than this podcast. Oh, <laughs> this moment on will be better. <laughs> well played. This the dog, the dog looks like a chocolate lab that they turned into a uh, red velvet. <laughs> a red velvet lamb. Red mm. velvet lab. Red velvet cake. Mm hmm. What else we got for uh, what's your name, Blake? Uh, next <laughs> one's from Jeannie. She could read her own, own damn question. Oh, I could if I had it up, but I think I asked about Dixit. Have you guys ever played that game? It's fantastic. I have played that game. You have to, uh, like, I've uh, utilized that in groups because you just have like these images, and you're allowed to like, like, what does this like, uh, like, say I choose the word imaginary, and then you look at the different cards in your hand and pick up what you think represents imaginary the best, and then I pick the one I like. Oh, okay, okay. So, oh, good. It, I I thought it was some crazy swinger game thing that you're into. I'm single. How can I be a swinger? I would be a unicorn. We learned last week not to be a swinger during COVID. Naughty in New Orleans has taught us that. <laughs> God. <sighs> I need an updated case, co- uh, case count from that. I'm going to look at that up, Brian. Brian did a good job after our show last week. He put it on our Facebook page that we had uh, Naughty in New Orleans, the swingers thing, uh, out of 300 that sh- uh, showed up, 40 cases of COVID. So far. So far, so far. As of last week, they had documented 40, 40 cases. It, it wasn't from any of the uh, events that were held. It was it was from uh, all the uh, bar, you know, drinking in bars and eating in restaurants that, you know. I think it would have been fine, but all the swingers <laughs> kept, kept staying up past 10 o'clock. Was, and that just wasn't any of the 10. Yeah, it, it wasn't they weren't the utilizing events. glory holes. They were utilizing each other, and that's where the COVID happened. <laughs> they were utilizing COVID holes. <laughs> uh, Brian, that article you sent was awesome, too, because uh, even the found, the creator of it or whoever was running it said, ah, in hindsight, we probably shouldn't have done this. <laughs> <laughs> we probably shouldn't oh, have a, a sexy swingers party in the middle of a pandemic. I feel like no, whoever shows up deserves dying. It's fine. <laughs> in hindsight, we shouldn't have had the young Republicans of New York uh, <laughs> go across to New Jersey to have their uh, annual party. Mm-hmm. Kind of hard to. It's, it's kind of hard to swing. We gotta keep six feet apart. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah, you don't, you don't those nipples for me. Six feet <laughs> apart. If you have a, a sheet of plastic between you, though, Peter Nor- P- Peter North wouldn't have an issue with it. Uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yes, definitely moving on. Uh, yeah, let's move on because it's a Quibi question. That's why he wants us to move on. It is. Yeah. Oh wait, no, I skipped one. Uh, it's from Fish. Uh, yeah, Oreo is coming out with the Lady Gaga flavored Oreo. What do you think this will taste like? Meat. 
Raw meat machine. <laughs> washed up Madonna. No, Madonna's washed upness is all Madonna. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does it? I would say it tastes like glitter. I'm going to say glitter. That's Kesha. Oh my yes. bad. <laughs> is Kesha well, still the fact a thing? That he had an answer right, right there. Uh, Doesn't Kesha, Kesha brush her teeth with with whiskey? Yes, or at least that's what she's saying about. Yeah. Uh, what the only thing I knew she sang about was somebody going down. What? On her Kesha song, Timber. Oh. I, like she, I have to, she's going down have to on, admit, on somebody's wood, something like that. I have to admit, the Kesher concert that Brian and I went and saw was actually pretty uh, entertaining. I agree. So she didn't sing her own songs? Well, she, she at the time, she didn't have the rights to her own songs. Yeah. Oh. because so she, so she did hired, sing her own songs. She, she hired a band, and they turned... So she couldn't play her her music... Like to the music, like she had to, she had she hired a rock band basically and turned all of her music into rock music. Oh, that's and awesome! It was actually an improvement. Awesome. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they were covering all her songs. Yeah, I feel like I would have enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, that it, actually is a way to get me to enjoy Kesha. Well, now I'm disappointed I missed it. I would, I would see Lady Gaga. Gaga, I think she would do a good concert. I would not see. talking about Lady Gaga. No, no, no. But, no, we're talking about Kesha and Lady, <laughs> Ga- Lady Gaga was the flavor. I'm just saying, uh, overall, I think I think they both could have done it. I'm just saying. Sorry. Shut up. I'll shut up now. The best uh, part about that concert was Brian <laughs> haggling with the uh, uh, people at the concert at venue Bogarts. at Bogarts <laughs> to get us into one of the private uh, rooms because they, they weren't, no one was using them. So Bogarts, when they remodeled, they put in two suites on, you know, like the steps when you're going down, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The, the middle area, like that little, like you come up into that area and then there's the other set of steps. So in the middle area, they added suites on either side. So the day of the concert, you go up to the VIP and you just, you ask the lady like, Hey, is the, are the suites taken? And they say yes or no. So for this, like, so we had, we've done it twice, actually. Uh, but for this one, I knew it was mostly going to be, like, teenage eight or 20-year-olds that couldn't afford it. So I, I asked the lady, I'm like, hey, like, is a suite available? And she's like, yeah. She's like, uh, it's like $200. And there were, like, f- there were five of us. And I'm like, yeah, that's not worth it. Because we had already paid to get in. Yeah. So anyway, like 20 minutes later, I went back. I'm like, hey, is that suite still open? She's like, yeah. And uh, she's like, oh, like 150. <laughs> I'm like, I'll give you I'll give you $100 right now in cash. She's like, oh, I got to talk to my boss. Let me see what I can do. So we're just like hanging out. And she comes back and she's like, we can do 100. <laughs> we can do 100, but no hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> Well, I mean, th- there was, it's basically <laughs> all it is, is you, you get the room, so you're not, you don't have to deal with people, but you get a server, mm-hmm. which is awesome, because oh. you don't ever have to go to the bar. Yeah. Stay in line. Fear me. Yeah. So, there you go. So it was well worth it. Yeah. And, no meat or uh, cheese tray. Someone got so drunk that they peed in my bathtub on themselves after that concert. Mm. It was not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, not sure? It will always be you in my head. Yeah. Because the way you said left that, a, I'm like, wow. Left open. <laughs> what else we got? What else we got, Blake? Allegedly, he could tell us. We won't get sued. What else we got? Next one. Next one is from Nick. It says, why does everyone pick on Brian's love of Queeby? I actually enjoyed the platform. Look at that, Brian. You Thank got, you, Nick. You got that. I feel like the only one who picks on you is Jason. What? And now, and now Jim. Yeah, Jim now. <laughs> I will say. No, it's, it, it's just Jason. 
I will say, Brian, on Twitter, we do get a couple people that have said that they actually enjoyed the, the platform. So there you go. But, uh, but not me, because well, I'm Is old. anybody going to answer the question? What's that? No. Hey, an Why do you pick on me? I don't pick on you. It's out of love. It's out of love, Brian. Wait, wait. He, Again, he said, I don't pick on you, and then he gave a reason. So I'm yeah. just you. <laughs> It's some days I do. Some days. Brian, you know what? I, I Again, you're my vote for best intern. So, you know what? It, it's out of yeah. line. It's out but line. you're we still don't, not we, answering the question. We don't <laughs> haze on this podcast. We just give you opportunities for professional development. That's right. I like that idea. Uh, Brian, I will try to do better. I, I apologize. I would I'm not that. asking you to do better. <laughs> I'm asking you to answer the question. I'm not answering the question. You can't handle the truth. You can. I can. No. I, I've been asking for it. No. <laughs> what What else we got, Blake? We're so hard on you because we know you can do better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this is from Pittsburgh nerd said Brian and Jason. What do you think Sting's role in the AEW will be? Brian, you go ahead. Sting showed up last week on AEW. So originally, See, I thought this was Sting out of like the music. No, it's the wrestler. Apparently, I'm yeah, wrong. I, I thought he was going to sing the background. Music. Shut up, both of yeah. you. Okay, Brian, go ahead. See, so we're going to bring any of the police with him. Anyways, Brian, go ahead. Mute him. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. <laughs> Don't leave me. God dang it, Brian! You left me. <laughs> um. Uh, originally, well, I love the entrance that he did. Yes. And. I enjoyed where they brought him in with MJF. Mm-hmm. I thought that was that was. I mean, that's that's the the route that you take bringing him back. I think. Um, but I was reading. Uh, so apparently, they've been teasing matches with him and uh, with Jericho now. Okay. Um, Jericho is going to be the what's his other um, like his alter ego thing that he wrestles under in new Japan. What did he wrestle Pain under? Maker. Pain maker. Yeah. 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 So I saw a couple, like a uh, couple advertisements and Twitter things floating around with, with like sting and that like hint and with Jericho and the pain maker mm-hmm. persona. So I'm not super jazzed about him wrestling because mm-hmm. WWE really screwed him over yeah. and, destroyed his neck yeah. so i really don't want to see him get a i don't want him just to, to see him look shitty in the ring mm-hmm. and b i don't want him just i don't want to see him get hurt again and c i really don't want AEW to turn into wcw 2.0 i don't think they're going to i think they're going to have him uh lead a group with darby allen which is fine yeah. which is fine they do a good job with that. They bring the older guys back to lead groups, and I like that. Tolly Blanchard, Arn Anderson. Yeah. Um, you have a good point, though. Arn Anderson's in there? Yeah, he's got uh, Cody Rhodes and all those guys. Um, uh, Cody I, Rhodes is an old guy, too. Why the hell isn't no, he that's leading Dustin. the group? That's Dustin Rhodes. <laughs> he's yeah, in the Cody's 34. Uh, yeah, an old guy. <laughs> Before I get... Ahead of myself. Did we do uh, Breath of Silence for Pat Patterson? Oh, yeah. Pat Patterson. <clears throat> Pat Patterson died. <sighs> Creator of the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Um, you d- that, it, that was a heartbreak, too, because Pat Patterson, everybody said, it was one of the nicest guys there uh, in wrestling. And he was very innovative. He uh, did the Fatal 4-Way match. He created that. Um, yeah. And did all that. He created quite a bit. Um, with the sting, that's actually a good point though, with Jericho, because Jericho's safe and what probably one of the safest yeah. workers out there, if you're going to have it, have it with him, but I don't have a problem. Like if he had sting had a group with Darby Allen, I don't know who else you could do. Hell, you could even have, uh, the Lucha Express in there or the Jurassic Express or whatever they call, uh, each other, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy and that, um, yeah. you could have those you guys. The Jurassic Park Express is the Jurassic Express, I think, isn't it? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, Jer- it's a Jungle yeah, Boy. Like Jungle Boy. It's Luke Perry's son. The actor Luke Perry. Yeah. Yeah. Son. Sideshow Luke Perry. Yes, Sideshow Luke Perry. So, uh, Blake finished. Moving on. 
Oh, sorry. I was taking a nap. Uh, Professor number one and doctor number one, do you think the NFL will actually finish this season due to COVID or will they start the playoffs early? They're going to finish the season. They'll finish. Yeah, if anything, they'll start the playoffs late to make up for missed time if they have to miss time. Are they doing a bubble for the playoffs? No. No. It's in discussion. Mm. I'm not sure if they – it's an option to go to if things get worse than what they are. Gotcha. I don't know how it gets worse than the Ravens, but – Rat birds. Yeah. Is there a Thursday yeah, really. night game this week? No. no. Rat birds are on TV right now. Yeah, That's, I knew that. You said that. They, I think they got a little extended time because it's playoff implications. Yeah, we complained about this last week. Jim, you were going to say something? I forgot what it was. Okay. Best color man in the business. I, yeah, I do have a question for Blake. Oh, I'm no. flipping through the stations on the television, and so you have to only watch one of these. Drunk History mm. or The Curse of Oak Island? They're both on right now. Which one would you watch? Uh, depends. If Jason C. Brown was listening, i say uh, Drunk History. Well, we assume he's listening because according to his IMD page, IMDB page, he listens. Correct. Or at least and frequently he's, guests. And he's coming on next week. So. Oh, great. great. I will say Drunk History. And his Audi commercials. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good thing is, he's also Jason C. Brown director, Hollywood director. He's also up for floppy uh, for Canadian of the Year at the Floppy Awards. Just letting you guys know that. Ugh. Just letting you know that. Uh, Jason I kind of C- decide if I should be insulted that I wasn't brought up again for Canadian of the Year. I'm just going to sit over here and weep. <laughs> uh, it's tough to win two years in a row, Jeannie. I'll be honest. Um, you came on the show a lot more, so it kind oh, of you got to know me more, and you're like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, I'm pretty. Uh, yeah, you're you're no longer a rarity. <laughs> you're, you're actually you're no longer close. an unknown entity to, to be discovered. <laughs> you're creeping closer to Pittsburghian of the year. Oh, uh, oh no! You know what, Pittsburghian? Like I've been of the- insulted. <laughs> I can't believe Jason said that about you. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, who came first to have her to let her on the show this week? Because Jeff <laughs> said no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jason well, I did not say no. Like. <laughs> I did not well, say no. Jason said that you I don't said even no. have the ability to say no because Jason does the booking. <laughs> not this time. I wanted Jeannie for every week, and brought, Jeff's like, "Fuck you! No, you don't get to bring I'm gonna her on." Go cry in my cave, well, guys. If I was going to complain about your booking, I'd be complaining about uh, uh, Stephen Izzy, not Jeannie. Oh, Stephen Izzy! Wow. I just can't wait until we have the girls take over, and Jason just sits there and can't talk and just records. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll be back in two hours. See you guys. April first. <laughs> Uh, when is that? December 29th? No, no. <laughs> oh, the floppies? The floppies? No, when's the all-female Hobie? Uh, next, w- next week, or next year. Next year. Next oh, week. next year. Yeah. In uh, January? When, when Nikki from New Zealand gets caught up. Uh, <laughs> she said in two weeks she's done. So she's, yeah, she's off for eight yeah. months. So, uh, Dr. Dana's allowed to be on if she wants to? I'll, I'll present the option. Okay, good, good. She's she's uh, currently like knee deep in COVID, so by then she might be waist to shoulder deep uh-huh. in COVID. So I do have to I do have an apology on this one. Uh, speak of Dr. Dana, I said she was the best nurse in Cincinnati, and she is. She tied though with my sister in law. Way to go. I completely forgot she was a nurse. So Doug, a <laughs> pants, uh, his wife. Best best nurse in Cincinnati. Co best I, nurses. I yeah. even knew she was a nurse, Jason. So, so this is what I got every day since the episode aired last week. Hey, <laughs> I get a text message. You do realize I'm a nurse and I'm related to you. And she's like, I'm going to send. That's you- why you say disqualified because of the relationship. That's, that's right. You say you can't have nepotism. 
Uh, <laughs> she then said, I'm going to send you a daily reminder I'm a nurse. And she has. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Yeah. She le- she sent me a directory of her name being on the list of nurses today. <laughs> so. Nice. Oh, I like her. That's good. Mrs. A Pants, I apologize. You are the the best nurse next with Dr. Dana. With Dr. Dana. <laughs> oh fuck. Jeff, give me some intro music to News of the Geek. News of the Geek. Ah, uh, let's see here. Uh, per readers, readers, uh, the Oscars 2021 will not be a virtual Reuters. event. What? Reuters? Uh, will not be a virtual Reuters. event and will be organized, Reuters. will be organized traditionally as an in-person telecast, according to Variety and Reuters. Uh, let's see here. The, <laughs> the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences moved the 73rd Academy Award ceremony to April 25th, 2021, because it will be so much better. So that theaters would be open again in the spring, which will allow more films to compete for the awards. So I guess the cutoff is March of 2021. Not sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Academy Awards. Does are... anybody care about the Academy Awards anymore? Or is everybody just sick and tired of listening to in all honesty, Hollywood people I... lecture you about their I like them. They don't lecture me. Uh, I just really want to go back to concerts. Like, I don't care about movie theaters. Emmy, the Emmy Awards were virtual in September, and it was a virtual only ceremony, and it was great. I actually thought it was it moved quicker and it was a lot better, so I had no problem with it being virtual. They didn't have to play you off; they just cut you off and yes. went to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't have to start the music in the background. Uh, we're going to shape uh, change some things up here. Uh, we got a couple. We got a couple other quick news stories. Speak of Naughty and New Orleans. Uh, Bob, the creator of the Naughty New Orleans Convention, uh, he did a radio talk sh- uh, talk interview last week. Uh, he said f- only fifty percent of the attendees had sex. So there you go at the Swingers Convention. Only that 50%. sounds like a terrible point? Swingers Convention <laughs> then. <laughs> well, I mean, you get well, I, I, it was just a networking that. event for future uh, swinging. Uh, he said, and this is no scientific poll, but he said that the reason why the attendees got sick uh, with COVID is because they got it from... Because they were dumbasses? <laughs> he said, no, no, they got it from community transit... Uh, um, yeah. What do you call it? Transmission? Thank you. Community they transmission. got it from the water fountain. Nope. He said in bars on Bourbon Street, they would go out and go to the bars. So that's why. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause you can- that's that what down. you do when you have a convention in New Orleans. So this was on Reddit under the swingers category. Oh God! Uh, and yeah, get out, get out, get out, get out. Yeah, now it's on your phone. Sexy Everyone hot wife. Re- sexy hot wife responded. Is the headline about COVID? Is this the headline about COVID or the lack of hooking up at a swingers convention? <laughs> Good point. Both. There you go. Like you have a right to decide if you're going to have sex with someone. You don't go there and be like, "Well, I guess I'll just settle for you." Yeah. Uh, let's that, see here. So what you're saying is you think most of the people that showed up were disappointed at their options? I guess and that's why half of them didn't. <sighs> I came all the way down here for this. <laughs> my that's choices are and you drink. and you. I'm going back to my room and masturbating. <laughs> I went to the bar and drink. <laughs> And then did that. Uh, they d- <laughs> they have said, though, it has come out uh, that uh, several swingers resorts, vacation resorts, are more popular than ever right now. So there you go. I guess there's swinger resorts around the country. Uh, the world well, now. the radio station I listen to on my alarm clock in the morning are sending people away for a trip to hedonism oh. for the new year. And I'm like... Really? You're sending people on a trip so they can all congregate together in the middle of a pandemic? Yeah. I'm sure um, Jamaica's happy. I can't date right now because I don't want to meet people who aren't in my bubble. So let's go fuck. (laughs) I guess there's a swingers resort called Desiree Pearl in... Uh, I'm sorry, I guess that would be Desire Pearl. Desiree Pearl is <laughs> <laughs> <It's> a stripper. 
Pearl's the singer. Oh, wow. I'll be back. I gotta go refill. <laughs> Desiree Pearl up on the stage. Come on down. Uh, Desire Pearl is at 75% capacity in, can- in the Caribbean. Uh, let's see here. Speaking of that, um, this could be my favorite one of the day. Uh, you, everybody knows Blake loves Burning Man, and he loves going to the Burning Man conventions and all that stuff. I think Blake likes setting people on fire, not the, the, the Same festival thing. Burning Man. Same oh, thing. Okay. Same thing. Uh, Art With Me, which sounds like a really horrible name of a thing, an art and music festival ran November 11th through 15th in Tulum, Mexico. It promised Tulum. to nurture, nurture personal growth. Did you say nurture? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, I have to go refill again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. It was a four-day festival, and unfortunately, uh, results are coming back that uh, that half the attendees are getting uh, COVID from it. Um, basic again. Yes. this is not a shocker that you you congregate without you know protection yep. at a festival, and you get sick. This is the best part. So, uh, one of the people that got sick, Michelle, uh, she lives in New York. She said, she, it's an alias. She said, I have nothing good to say about this event. They serve food, all open barbecue finger food. Everybody was grabbing with their hands. And all I will say is that not, there was not one mask. And I got more sick than I ever did in my entire life after that party. I'm, I'm sure it had nothing to do with the finger barbecue food. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was doing stink palms, guys. My <laughs> my issue is at this point, <laughs> fuck you. Like, yeah. that's on you. You were bitching that they're serving bar- barbecue finger right. food. Don't eat it. <laughs> fuck yeah. you. And wear your own goddamn fucking mask. Yeah. You didn't see a mask better... because you weren't wearing one. Don't go. <laughs> yeah, just don't go in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> I feel like at this point, if you... Do something that you're not supposed to do and you get it. It's your fault. Like, it's your fault. On. Exactly. We're, Fuck these we're people. almost 10 months I'm, into this. and it's, I'm fine with, okay, you did something stupid and you got it and you're sick. But, but the problem but don't is complain you're about spread it because you knew what you were doing. But the problem is you're spreading it to other people. People in your bubble who think you should be safe, but you didn't tell them you were in Mexico so, catching the COVID. So the article is on the Daily Beast. Or Nolan's getting naughty. <laughs> the article is on the Daily Beast, and they said that uh, they interviewed a doctor back in New York City, and they she said 60 to 70% of her patients that have COVID in the last week were either at this festival or knew somebody that went to that festival. So they're bringing it back. Miami is getting the same issues, too. They interviewed doctors there. And they're 40 to 50 percent. Um, so wow. they're bringing it back. And this is it's a super spreader event. Um, <laughs> I guess Cincinnatians just aren't that hip. <laughs> no, nobody wants to go to a fucking beach party. The only, only people from New York and Miami are going to New Mexico for this shit. So this is the best. New Mexico or Mexico? Mexico. 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 Yeah, Tulum, Mexico. Sorry. Um, yeah. oh, uh, Cincinnati and Ohio. Ohio wasn't invited. Yeah, we weren't cool enough. <laughs> yeah, we are not on the guest list. So, um, it was 21 hotels partnered with this festival. Uh, so, it obviously was a pretty packed area. And also, the bad thing is Mexico is hitting at a peak right now. Their mortality rate is some of the highest in the world uh, with COVID. So, mm-hmm. that's always good, too. Um, what do you think? How, how many people got think? sick from the water? So, they don't talk about that. They did talk to Rodrigo Palencia, a 34-year-old. Hey, I got that right. Uh, who He didn't produce this event, but he produced a uh, dance party the very next day after the festival. And <laughs> he said, um, one of my, quote, one of my partners was going to the parties at Art with me, and he tested positive. But this is the best part. He said, it shouldn't be on the people arranging and hosting these events, but rather the participants who refuse to wear masks or keep their distance. Quote, in the end, it's not about Tulum. It's about people. We are giving you a party and trying to do something to kill the stress that we all have, but just wear a mask. And people just don't understand. And we can't kick everyone out that's not wearing a mask. It's complicated. 
No one's it's not complicated. You're not wearing a mask. It's not put on correctly. You're fucking I, out of here. Hey, you know, you take a calculated risk. And if you're going to expose yourself to that risk and you get sick, then it's on, on you. you. It's on you. There you go. That's just, it. All right, moving on. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. It, I just like the quotes. That's the only reason I brought this up is like. That is true. They're it's serving true. finger food. Don't eat. <laughs> yeah. eat you your own food? Like, come on. Nobody's wearing yeah. a mask. So you didn't either. So you didn't? Yeah, really. I just like the. But it was so hot. It was too hot. It's complicated. It, it's yeah. tough to do work. Work's hard. So complicated. Oh, why do you have to go and make things so complicated? <laughs> Get out of my head, Jeff! <laughs> Uh, that's my news of the geek. That's all I got. Uh, hey, uh, September 17th through the 19th next year, uh, it's the Cincinnati Comic Expo. Good news is, with the vaccine, and maybe if people don't go to fucking art with me parties, we could have these conventions. So fucking stay home, people. Sorry, Stay home like until that. September, people. Stay home until September. Because we got fucking Funko Pops out the ass to give away. Jim is excited because... Funko just released gummy bears, uh, Funko Pops. And Bouncing here and there and everywhere. Jim, are you ready? That's not the song Jason sang. Jim, go ahead. Give Jason, me your intro. Don't, don't, don't sing it. Okay, I won't. I won't. Gummy, gummy bears, bears, gummy, gummy bears. bears. Where do they live? I don't know. Down the street? Who knows? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I will have, we will have, Hobie will have at their station uh, one gummy bear Funko Pop to give away, just to give you, just give you an idea. So, and if I don't need it. And I'm the person, take guarantee. The person that asks me to sing the song will get it. So there you go. Can I just <laughs> sing the song at you? Because you, you don't sing are, it right. You don't you, sing you, the song right. You don't you, have. You got to sing the wrong song for. That's Jason. Not that someone asks you to sing it. They come up and sing you the wrong song. I like it. They have to sing me the wrong song. Look at your animal. Tell me bears. Where do they live? This is a little <laughs> song. I'll touch my nose. Sing <laughs> the bear. Jeannie, Jim will back me up. That was season seven theme song. You weren't. You probably didn't watch through season seven. <laughs> You're destroying childhood, Jason. So much. <laughs> I love you, Jim. <sighs> Anyways, let's get through this real quick here. Box office news and world reports with Jeff. All right. Box office news. Number one, The Croods. Number two, Half Brothers. Number three, Freaky. Number four, All My Life. Number five, The War with Grandpa. I really want that to go away. Jeff? The War with Grandpa? Robert Downey Jr. will not die. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you wanted to get through that quick, so I just... You did a great quick. job. It was very quick. Uh, um, how much did the Croods make this week? Uh, Four point four million. Mm. Uh, what was the what's their what's their up to date total? Uh, Twenty point three million. What's their budget? What Fifty five million dollars. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey Brian. Uh, everything else made under a million, so it made under eight hundred thousand. Jeff, everything else. <laughs> Uh, Brian Robert Downey Jr. is up for a floppy award with one of his films for worst film of the year, Doolittle. So just let you know, it, he could win a floppy t- this year too. So big year, big year. If you won Brian the same year that Robert Downey Jr. wins a floppy, that's huge. That's huge for your career. Huge. It's a step in the right direction. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Maybe people will start taking me seriously. I agree. I agree. I, I'm, I got your back, Brian. I got your back, buddy. Starting with the boss. Jeff? Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> Sasha Banks? Tony Danza. Oh, sorry. No, Angela was the boss. Listen, yeah, Ma- Listen, Ma- Listen, Malana be my boss. Stop it. Stop it. Judith Light is the boss, damn it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's another new show I just started watching with her in it. Um, it's uh, the it's on Netflix. It's called Manhunter. It's about uh, the Richard Jewell, the Atlantic uh, Atlanta Olympic bombing thing. Okay, yeah, oh, I know. It I came saw out her. on. It, is it um, 
Yeah. Started watching that this week. I forgot about it. Is it a TV show or a movie? It's a TV show. Oh, I think okay. uh, it was like a... Like a miniseries. Um, yeah, well, it's 10 episodes. Oh. Um, it was made for Spectrum. Like Spectrum, Spe- it was yeah. For, for the cable mm-hmm. series, and then, then Netflix got it. So it just came out, like, I think Monday. I didn't realize, yeah, I didn't realize it was 10 episodes, but I remember It is. Spectrum. I didn't think it was either, yeah. but... I, I honestly, okay, because, yeah, I thought a two-hour movie seemed to be about enough time to tell the story, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you need ten episodes. So there's a complete other part of the story that they didn't tell in the movie about it, that they tell in the series where they're actually, this series actually hunts the the real bomber. Oh, okay. So, like, they show Spoiler. that along with how the story of Richard Jewell plays out. And then oh, is that a spoiler, kinda, Jason? <laughs> it, tie it all together. Yeah, Jason, this is history. Oh, I, it, it's history that you were even alive for, so you should have yeah. remembered when it was news. Yeah. There was no spoilers. Like, we lived <laughs> through this. Jeannie, this is why Jeff didn't want you on the show. Uh, <laughs> what do we got, Jeff? What's coming up? <laughs> Upcoming December 11th of 2020, we have the Never List. After the sudden death of her best friend, a straight A obedient team sets out to fulfill their secret list of outrageous acts they said they'd never do. Ooh, sounds forbidden. Uh, who stars in this? Uh, that is uh, Five uh, Stewart um, from Hansel and Gretel. Uh, uh, Kiko Ajena, Andrew Kai, Brenna D'Amico. Nobody real big names after that. <laughs> Those are the big names. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also coming out December 11th, we have Parallel. Parallel. One year presented by Seven Days, Shabby Apartment, Daily Routine, and Parallel Mountain. Eric lives with his dog in a learned, learned stereotype in a small flat. Uh, it's a animated, uh, like oh. Japanese film. It's really kind of weird. So, just just watch it. I really can't because the synopsis of it is like three paragraphs. <laughs> it's not perpendicular. It's, it's the, the opposite sequel. of perpendicular. It's the sequel. Oh. Um, also coming out, we have Queer Japan. Uh, Queer Japan. This is a documentary. Trailblazing artists, activists, and everyday people from across the spectrum of gender and sexuality defy social norms and dare to live unconditional, uh, unconventional lives in this kaleidoscopic view of LGBTQ plus culture in contemporary Japan. I want to hear Jason try to say uh, kaleidoscopic. Kaleidoscopic. Ooh. It's oh, he, pronounce it if, wrong. Yeah, yeah if you tell him how to pronounce it, tell him how to beat yeah. it, he'd be in trouble. Oh. Suck it, Jeff. <laughs> you have to say something like kaleidoscopic. <laughs> <laughs> but properly. Kaleodioscopio. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, apparently, that? also a movie called Assassins is coming out. I it's, it's don't not, think it's Stallone. Uh, Stallone movie. Uh, is it the Banderas re- is it, movie? Is it the re- yeah, it's. I think it's a reissue. They're bringing it back. <laughs> it's actually a documentary on an account of the two women convicted of assassinating Kim Jong Un's half brother, Kim Jong Nam. The film oh. trials and attempt to understand whether they are trained killers or simply pawns. This they looks, were pawns. This looks interesting. I actually, yeah, I actually this. think this one does look good. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised this movie hasn't been uh, hacked or shut down yet by uh, North Korea. Give it time. Give it time. No, no, they actually like it because it pushes the uh, the murder on other people and not Kim Jong Un himself. Ah, a different narrative. I see. And he probably produced it. Yeah, <laughs> he, he plays one it. of the women in it. <laughs> uh, what else you got? Uh, we have Wander Darkly. Ooh, 
This is a drama. New parents, Adrian and Mateo, are forced to reckon with trauma amidst their troubled relationship. They must revisit the memories of the past and unravel haunting truths in order to face their uncertain future. Adrian. Okay, okay moving on. Bring Luna. spare batteries for your light. Diego Luna's cool. I like Diego Luna. Uh, what else, Jeff? Arch Enemy. Arch Enemy. Max Fist claims to be a hero from another dimension who fell through time and space to Earth where he has no powers. No one believes his stories except for a local team named Hamster. A local team named Hamster. This looks like a really That's good a documentary. Horrible name. It's a documentary. I'm about to say I am very intrigued by that uh, synopsis. <laughs> I want to see this movie. Good old Hamster. Uh, Joe Manganello. Plays oh. Max Fist. Oh, well, that's your guy, Jim. Yep. Hey, Jim, is that the foot long? And then some for him. <laughs> He's so dreamy. God. What else we got, Jeff? Uh, we have Wild Mountain Time. T H Y M E. A pair of star crossed lovers in Ireland get caught up in their family's land dispute. Emily Blunt, Jamie Dornan, Christopher Walken, John Hamm. Yeah. I mean, people I've heard of. Emily Blunt in Ireland. I'm in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, also, we have Farewell Amour. Farewell Amour. Uh, no. Reunited after 17 years, an Angolan immigrant is joined in the U.S. by his wife and daughter. Now strangers sharing a one-bedroom apartment, they discover a shared love of dance that may help them overcome the distance between them. You don't really hear about a whole lot of movies where an Angolan is the head character. I kind of like that. Oh, and rounding out our list of movies opening, we have the most Weasel's Angolans Tale. aren't allowed to leave. That's the problem. The Legend. Weasel's Tale. Legend. A group of four old friends conformed by a film director, film writer, and actress and her husband share a big house in the country. Their coexistence is, um, is menaced by a young couple who resourcefully and deceitfully seek to get them to sell the house to develop a real estate project of their own. They swingers? It's like no. Nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. No rabbits. Down. All you have to do is <laughs> get them down to New Orleans to then bulldoze the house where they're gone. <laughs> they go to an art with me convention. Uh, let's see here. Thanks, Jim. Did a wonderful job as usual. Jeff, do better. Uh, give me a top five, Jeff. Top five. Top five. I asked you to do better, and you did. Congratulations, Jeff. That was better. You know, we have a low bar. Four is better sometimes. We, from this moment on, it was better. Uh, top five this week is worst twist in films. Not a Chubby Checkers twist, but like a plot twist. So you there you go. Again. Oh! Oh, I had Oliver was my number one. I had a bunch of movies. Please, sir, can fantastic. I have some more? <laughs> Crispin Glover movies made my list because of all the bad <sighs> You saw those dancing movies are out. Uh, Blake, number five for you. Number five. Uh, my number five is the 2001 Planet of the Apes. Tim Burton. I hear that is an honorable mention. Yes, it Tim Burton. sucks. It was, you know, IMDb's got it at 5.7, which I'm surprised it's that. It's out of a hundred, though, so that's why. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I'm, oh I mis- I misread all these numbers then. <laughs> but but here's 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 a here's a clue for the rest of my top five. That's not the only Marky Mark Wahlberg movie that's in it. Ooh. Oh, I 
That's oh, one of I know what your top. other one is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of our favorites. Yeah. What? I think that might appear in my list, too. And mine. It's just, where is it? That's the next question. Where is it on your list? Just to let you guys know, there, uh, listeners know, there could be some spoilers on here. Uh, oh, yeah, we're talking about the twist. Uh, let's see. So Footloose is off. Eight Years Old is, uh, is the uh, newest movie on my list-ish. Okay. It, it, oh, wait, no. There is one that's newer on that list. I got one, we'll too. We'll talk about that. Yeah, Jeff. I think okay. me and you're going to have very similar ones. Uh, it's possible. Uh, Jeannie, number five. I have all of the M Night Shyamalan Ding Dong movies. <laughs> wow, that uh, is that your top five or? <laughs> That's my fifth spot. Your first five of twenty. <laughs> he hobied it. <laughs> All of them. Well, I'm not going to say if you got any yeah. of mine because you may have. <laughs> Even, yeah, uh, probably the happening. The, the last village. Uh, that just sucked. There's no <laughs> twist ending. You're right. That just is a shitty movie that was supposed to be awesome. There's the twist. <laughs> I thought the village. I thought the village was actually a, a good twist. I like the village. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't see why people thought that was a horrible no, twist. I mean, no, the, the twist that people don't like is that there are no animals out there are no wild beasts keeping people in the village it's just oh, the fact wearing the elders to keep them, yeah the elders to keep them in the village so they didn't go out in modern society kind of like twist yeah the, the twist is that yeah the twist is that the big twist that everybody liked is that oh it's actually modern today yeah it's modern yeah you know? Well, the oh, worst okay. twist in it is the fact that the people are so stupid that they named the shed that thou shalt not go to <laughs> yeah that, that they just he just forgot to write that part of the script. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll change that later and forgot yeah. to go back. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> said thou shalt not go to. Well, now I want to go. Jeff, the <laughs> island. Do not, uh, <laughs> do not turn this lover. lover. Okay. <laughs> Anytime you tell wow. somebody not to do something, it's all they can think of and only thing they want to do. So, you know, you know, twist. Well, it's not right. a twist. We're, <laughs> we're, we're taking this whole COVID thing wrong. We should be telling everybody, go out. Have a good time. <laughs> It would call the population, but you know it's not going to be great for our hospitals. Go with the art with me. Go to art. Just don't go. Just don't go to the hospital. Stay home. So if you leave to do these things, you have to wear a bracelet that doesn't allow you into the hospitals because you have decided that your life is worth <laughs> ruining, and and then then you don't get help. I like that idea. Yeah. You are mm-hmm. foregoing your opportunity to get help <laughs> yeah. by choose actively choosing to put yourself in harm's way. That's yeah. right. I have a 99.96% chance of survival, so I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. You're not. Good night, Shamalama <laughs> Ding Dong is my uh, number five. Uh, number five for you, Jim. Uh, the happening, because the <laughs> twist is nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to that be was my... my number, that was my number two. I had it high on my list. I uh, I had that at number four. I had it at number four as well. Yep. I had mine pretty high there. Put it on that the board. Good job, Jim. 5.0 on IMDb. 39 okay. on the meta score. And, of course, another Marky Mark. Marky Mark. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian, number five. Uh, my number five was Now You See Me. That was my number two. Is it the Mark I'm Ruffalo not- part? Yeah, I was actually in on it the entire time. Yeah, Yeah. all right. Uh, I wasn't actually the FBI agent trying to track you down. I was the one who hired you from the beginning. (laughs) I mean, spoilers. Uh, I feel like you could see that from the beginning, so ah, not really. Now you can see it. Uh, (laughs) Jeff, (laughs) Jeff, number five. Uh, My number five is the Return of the Jedi. Okay. I thought the Luke and Leia being brother and sister was actually a stupid twist. And don't you like making out with your siblings? <laughs> no, not thing. at all. <laughs> <laughs> that is low on the list of things I would want to do. I uh, we watched that. Speaking this... of Game of Thrones, <laughs> <laughs> we watched that this weekend. Do you think after they blew up the Death Star and they were on Endor and everybody was partying and drinking, you think there was some uh, Ewok love dub, going dub. on with the, some of the dub, other dub, people? Dub. Some furries, yeah, like Luke and Chewbacca. 
I yeah. Chewbacca just took them. I mean, Han and Leo had each other, so I mean, unless it was like I, Luke or Chewbacca or the droid. No, Lando. Lando was definitely getting some Ewok action. Oh, he could have been. I, I I was just wondering that. I had a uh, Return of the Jedi tied with another one of my entries. What number? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. I want to keep it secret. Uh, my number five. Uh, let's see here. Um, well, I'll just do it this way too. I'll do uh, Phantom Menace. Menace. Uh, the fucking media and chlorines, chlorines, whatever the fuck they were called. That that's what's inside everybody for the Jedi. <sighs> Fuck was that, that really twist? a twist? Though? That I wasn't think a it, twist. I thought it was because I I think it's a twist. Because <laughs> yeah, if he thinks it was, it. he's right until proven wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I think the it's twist tw- is that it's just not God. What? It's not a twist. It is a twist because <laughs> up until that point, that's not what it was about. And then that kind of there's changed no everything. magical force. It's all bacteria in your blood. Yeah, that's all it is. Yeah. So fuck that. There's. There's still a magical force, but the bacteria in your blood makes it easier for you to access. No. Is that a twist or is it a reveal? It's a twist, it's okay? A Shut the fuck reveal. up, all of you. Shut it's up. It's a reveal. I'll with that. It's a twist. Wait, Vito, you're, you're number five. <laughs> My number four. Jeannie, this is why I didn't want you on. Uh, I mean, damn it, Jeff, you don't want you on. <laughs> he just admitted it was him. <laughs> he did just admit it. Uh, number four for me is The Happening. It's the trees. Yeah. M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong. Yeah, uh, number four was the happening for me also. Brian, number four? Brian, wake up. Number four. Huh? Number four. Uh, number four for me was the movie Savages. I saw uh, that on the Worst list, ending ever. What is that I ending, Brian? I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know the ending. Uh, it's I got uh, Blake Lively and Taylor Kitsch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I got sucked in it because of Blake Lively, and I started watching it. And then the ending happened. I'm like, oh, that was a cool ending. And then it goes into. Well, shut up, wait, hold on. Let Brian the say it. I'm, I'm going to stop speaking. I'll let Brian explain it. <laughs> then you're like, what the fuck? What's the ending, Brian? So, so the ending. Um, so they kidnap. Blake Lively gets kidnapped. Yeah. And the ending is they go through it, like where there's like some ransom and. She she gets killed, and then it's, and it's an awesome ending as it, it runs the first time. Am, am I right, Brian? Yes. You they were watching it they like, wow, that was really. If they cool. would have ended it the way that they showed it, it would have been awesome. But the whole ending turned out to be just a, a dream of hers. Oh. She it was a it was a it was a dream bef- like the night before anything happened, and then it, no, like, it's, it's a dream before. Out. When she's in the car on the way there, and she's imagining how it's going to turn out, okay. and then the, everybody's like yeah. whacked, and but you're like, "Wow, like, that was really good." And then she's like, "But that's not what really happened." And you're like, "What?" Right. <laughs> yeah, like every, everything like work like everything just works out. Like everybody like gets what they want, and they all just kind of go their own ways. It's like nothing. Like I mean, like that didn't happened throughout the entire movie why like i don't know it was it was dumb i'm thinking like whatever studio put it out the studio head didn't like that ending so they made him put on a happy ending even though it made no sense probably uh, probably uh what's your name over at sony and yeah, it was gone. audience oh, tested everybody did that is oh. uh right Oh, sorry, Brian, first there for a second. Uh, Jim, what's your number four? My number four, I hope you this. It is The Empire Strikes Back and the, uh, uh, what's the last one? Uh, Rise of Skywalker? Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Okay, why? It turns out that they're all just one big family drama. Yep. That Ray is a Palpatine. Luke is Darth Vader's son. <laughs> yeah, it, they they ruined the entire uh, uh, galaxy uh, universe because of their their family squabble. They're the they're the the family we shall not name. Basically, on this yep. podcast, uh, yeah. Much. Rise of Skywalker was my number one. That uh, Ray has to be a Palpatine, even, mm-hmm. just to 
to Pretty contradict much. the previous movie, I thought was a terrible, terrible. That that yes. was my, that was my number one as well. All right, got Janet. him. Yeah. So my Return of the Jedi done. and Rise of Skywalker were both tied for my number one. Look at that. <laughs> Three I have number one, one. I have one last number one that's in that group. <laughs> Nobody has picked any of my movies, by the way, guys. <laughs> Jeannie, None you, of my movies have been. What's your number four? Wally. Well, we all Wally. Why? What's the twist? Because the ship is the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, the ship twist. is the bad guy? Yeah. What? Yeah. I've never even seen it. <laughs> now I should see Wally because that sounds cool. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen the whole thing of Wally. My kids are not impressed with it. Well, uh, we tried to watch it in the theater a couple times, Jeff, but. Oh, that's right. That's. We had technical difficulties and we couldn't get it up. We saw the the short like the two or three short. times, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Blake, what's your number four? That was the uh, oh, number four. You guys haven't guessed it. What? Hey, uh, it was the forgotten. Oh, God. Okay. Yep. You know, anytime you got Juliana in there, I'm, yep. or Juliana Moore, I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm all in. And I, I watch this movie, and the 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 reveal or the twist is is that it's it's just really bad. It's a horrible movie. It's like you don't really know who's putting her through this thing. You don't. They're, they're just somebody called them. You realize that the twist is she's really an experiment, and, and they, you don't know if it's aliens. You don't know if it's this weird thing. It's, it, but it was a good it was a good psychological thing up until the twist. You know, and then you're like, oh, God, this is horrible. I remember renting that back in the day, Blake, and yeah. going, oh, this isn't bad. And then you get to the end, and you're like, what the fuck is this? What the like, fuck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What did I, what the hell? I don't think I'm aware of this movie at all. Uh, Blake, well, don't waste your time. Uh, Blake, what's your number three? Uh, my number three, did you get around to seeing the 2000, the 2020 Fantasy Island, Jason? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <sighs> okay, it's a dismal 4.9 <laughs> in a 22 meta score on IMDb. It is the twist upon a twist upon a twist. And by the time you're at the third twist, you're just yelling, stop. <laughs> Hammer it's time. so horrible. It is uh, so no, horrible. No, no. Uh, oh, my God, that movie is so horrible. <laughs> eventually, we'll get to see it. I, I can't believe I actually like rented it on DirecTV so I can... <laughs> Kill time. Yeah, proof that you spent money on it. I got early you. COVID. That was an early COVID mistake. I can't believe you have direct TV. Jeannie, what's your number three? I got to watch my Browns. I got to watch my football, man. Ugh. Sunday ticket, baby. What's, what's your number three, Jeannie? Zootopia. What? That was a great yeah. film. I didn't say it wasn't a great film. The twist ending at the end sucks. I'm trying to remember the what the twist ending was. The sheep did it. The lamb did it. Worst U2 album. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like and that It's like, ah, oh, I, uh, I did this because I'm going to prove that predators can't be trusted. <laughs> yeah, no, dumb ending. It was not, it was not <laughs> You're it was dumb. dumb ending, Genie. Yeah. All right. See, it's You're Jason. You're not going to my next two then either. <laughs> Jim, what's your number three? Help me. My number three is Hancock. Ah, you son of a bitch! Uh, I will agree with that. I liked Hancock, but that ending sucked. That is my number three. I'm glad I never watched the movie. Oh, good job, Jim. Jason Batman in it. Uh, Hey, Jim. Jason Batman. (laughs) It was like two separate movies in one. Saturday Night Live this week. Yeah. Fucking Peter Berg. Ugh. Good call, Jim. Good call. That's my number three. Uh, Brian, what's your number three? Uh, my number three is Spider-Man 3. Uh, what twist? Uh, where the butler starts talking about... Um, I do it all he's always known. Yeah, he's always known him as the Green Goblin. Yeah, and that's how he turned yeah. into a good guy, right? Like he's Right. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever watched? I can't believe you watched a superhero film. Good for you. It didn't bode well. <laughs> I, I, just, 
There was no Rocky Four available at the time. Yeah, I, I didn't know you were that big into superhero films. I I'm not making fun of you. I just didn't know you. I'm. Were. I mean, I'm 85 percent through all of the Marvel movies. Okay. Okay. And uh, I'm. Are you watching uh, them in like order, 50. or are you just yeah, watching am. what you want? Oh, sweet. Does, does it make a lot more sense? Yes. Chronologically, yeah, they make far more sense. Awesome. Because I had seen, I started just watching like Iron Man, then I would see Iron Man 2, then Iron Man 3. But now I've went back and, and started watching them. I found the chronological order of them and started re-watching them that way. And it's, it is it is far... Chronological order of when they were released or when they take place? When they take place, like okay, so the, Captain America it, winter, or first Avenger was yes. first, and then yes. uh, Captain Marvel was second. That type thing. Yes. Okay. Do yeah. You, that, yeah. Do you have Disney Plus, Brian? I do. Okay, because they they help you. They they have it. I, I'm yeah. guessing that's how you did it. They have it in chronological now. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Spider Man, the new one, uh, has. Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, um, Alfred Molina, Molina is back. Kirsten Dunst, Tobey yeah. Maguire. Uh, they're talking Tobey Maguire still. Uh, so uh, I was reading today; they said he was in. So oh, okay, I good. Don't know. Yeah, ooh. So, um, yeah, they're basically it's a Spider Verse live action Spider Verse. So, uh, the rumor is that with Emma Stone, she won't be playing Gwen Stacy from Andrew Garfield's world. But Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen? Yeah. Because obviously, you know, she would have a broken neck if she was in I, from Andrew Gwen. And I think I saw that they were also talking to Kirsten Dunst, too. Ugh. Uh She's in, I believe. She, she is in. Her sure. and Emma Stone are both confirmed. Huh. Okay. Uh, Man. Sorry, okay, I can't wait to see some Spider Gwen costume. Spider Gwen's awesome. Mm. Uh, number three for you, Jeff. Uh, my number three is Ocean's Twelve. Julia Roberts. No, it's not even that. It's the they went through this whole thing where they're showing you try and steal the thing they're trying to steal, and then at the end of the movie they tell you, "Oh, we stole it off camera at the very beginning of the movie and just went through the motions to fool you." I agree. I agree. And I went, that, that, "That's stupid." Um, what the twist? My number three was Hancock. Uh, my number two is the Polar Express. Uh, the twist is that Steven Tyler was an elf. Uh, did not see that coming. Did not That's see not that coming. That's not a twist either. Oh, that Jason. was a twist. Jeff, back me up. That was a twist. <laughs> yeah. That was a nightmare. It, it put his it's pants a twist. in a twist. So. <laughs> From this moment on, <laughs> <laughs> Steven Tyler is an elf. We, yeah, from this moment on, we are Clifford the Big Red Dog sized poop. <laughs> It's a large shit. I love it. Uh-oh. Jeff, number two. Talking about uh, Steven Tyler from Toys see. in the Attic? Steven Tyler from uh, Aerosmith, yes. Yeah, oh. Uh, yes, Toys in the Attic, the movie, the <laughs> song, yes. The album. No, sorry. Al- the album, group. I got it. I thought it was down. a group called Toys in the Attic. No, this is what Run DMC thought the name of Aerosmith was, Toys in the Attic. Oh. Uh, when they sampled, when they first started sampling the, the song. And they didn't realize the name of the band was actually Aerosmith. Good old Steven Tyler. Fucking Polar yeah. Express. Uh, Jeff, number two. My number two is Now You See Me. Uh, Brian, number two. Uh, my number two is Hard Kill. <laughs> What's the twist? <laughs> the, the twist is there is no plot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good twist. I like it. Uh, Jim, number two. Uh, my number two is not a movie. It's a television show, but it pissed me off. Last episode of Game of Thrones. When, uh, oh, let's elect, let's elect Bran. He did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he must have the, he's got the best story to tell. Why not elect him? And he even, can't have even, children. This is fine. Even with his sight and vision, he never really helped anybody. No. Oh. And, got and then the worst part is, okay, well, the Seven Kingdoms will elect Bran. Uh, the North doesn't want to. 
even hey, though he's from the north and I'm his sister. Okay, you can leave. But the rest of the six kingdoms will have Brayon as our king. <laughs> we're not we're not done with this democracy shit. Spoiler. <laughs> It was such a horrible twist. <laughs> I would almost put the whole. T- I would put, almost put the whole uh, season seven and eight as a horrible twist. It can't be a twist because there's no actual story, guys. <laughs> uh, Genie number two. My number two, <laughs> like My number two number is two. Frozen. What's the twist? The prince is the evil guy, and that yeah. the answer is true love between sisters. You need no man to twist. No, I like the. No, the, the you the don't twi- need a- Yeah, I'll- no. The twist is honestly that the prince is trying to kill her. Like yeah, that's yeah. On. yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't discount twist. that, Jeannie, because that was that was kind of a tacked on twist. I agree with you. I like yeah. the. I like. It the was sisters. rushed and it was horrible. Yeah, I like the sisters. Oh, you yeah. know, being you know yeah. loving each other, and that's the thing, but. Yeah. Uh, what? No, not that way. Shut up. This isn't. Bra- <laughs> this isn't brazers. We're not talking about incest. This is not Game of Thrones. This is not oh, brazers. No. Oh, it's not Pornhub either. Yeah. Uh, number number two, Blake. Uh, I never saw. Can't see me now or whatever it is. Now you see I'm, me. I'm glad I don't have to. Ah. But yeah, it was it was the happening. It, yeah. I, it sucked so bad. It was high on it was high on my list. And mm-hmm. what's your number one? My number one was a triumvirate. It was, uh, you guys got it right with Return of the Jedi. I also agree with the Rise of Skywalker, and I'm also throwing in The Last Jedi, too. I hate all the twists in all three of those movies. I'm going to tell you, remember last year when I came in and I was like, this movie sucks, this movie sucks, and you're like, oh, no, it doesn't. This movie sucks. Mm-hmm. Huh? <sighs> Jeannie, don't make us yeah. kick you off. Jeff will yeah. do it. Jeff will do it. You already I, have. I agree. <laughs> Jeannie's right. The movie sucked. Uh, Jeannie Which would... movie are we talking about? Skywalker. Rise yeah. of Skywalker. Well, we all agree Rise of Skywalker sucked. Mm-hmm. When I was yeah. there last year, everyone was like, no, it doesn't. Oh, no, no. I didn't say it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Jeannie, what's your number one? Big Hero 6. Okay, get the fuck out. Just get out. <laughs> I, again, it's not that it's a bad movie. You're going to tell me that him being the oh, bad guy, nah, like nah, the nah, guy nah, nah, you, the nanobots, like you have to burn down the school and kill the person who's like your biggest fan. Like that's the what the fuck? I'm going straight I'm to Jim on this one. Six, Jim, what's your number one? Six of those movies? No, that was <laughs> Leonard. <laughs> yes. Jim, what's your uh, number, number one? One. My number one is. Uh, the Dark Tower. The Dark Tower? <laughs> no, the biggest twist is that this is an epic uh, series of books, and they turned it into a fucking turn of like an hour and a half movie. <laughs> That's one part of the twist. I'm so angry. <laughs> uh, Brian, what's your number one? Uh, my number one was the Dark Knight Rises. Okay, how come? The Miranda Tate uh, is actually uh, Talia Taja Al Ghul. Ghul. Talia Al Ghul. I honestly kind of liked it. That twist. It, it kind of diminished Bane. That, yes, that was. That's my what next... I didn't like about it is that it completely took Bane. Like I was it just born like. With them he, off. I mean, I think maybe it's like I should have seen it coming and I didn't, so I gave him credit for fooling me because sure. I should have seen that she that Talia Ghul was going to pop up, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, I like uh, I like the college humor version take on that. Yeah, you know, with the Batman talking yes. to Talia Ghul, you know, we're completely <laughs> just fucked all night. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. <laughs> The thing I saw online, uh, Brian, with that is the same thing that you said. It took away from Bane. It basically, yeah, yeah. That was. I mean, they, they, the whole movie is about how powerful and how imposing Bane is, and then all of a sudden at the end, it's like, nope, not so much. Yeah, or like Liam Liam Neeson's character in Iron Man Three. Yeah, Liam Neeson. What? (laughs) Who? 
fuck out playing it. Do you mean Ben Kingsley? <laughs> Taken three? <laughs> no, Iron Man three. Jeff, what's your number one? They made him look like Liam Neeson. I mean, Jesus. What's your number one? Uh, but my number one was Rise of Skywalker. That's what mine was. Real quick, uh, so we can wrap this up. Yeah, uh, it was on. so horrible. That that whole thing of her being a Palpatine was just so horrible. You know, it's, it's horrible. It would have been better yes. if... Um, they should... Yeah. Um, if they have... kept her a nobody? Yeah, it would have been better. If you yeah, would have been a nobody, it would have been better. Uh, my number one was Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Honorable mention? Honorable mentions, I have, what do I have the Planet of the Apes that uh, Blake had mentioned. Uh, April Fool's Day, a horror movie that, oh, yeah, we weren't really killing people. It was just an uh, April Fool's prank. Yeah. And uh, The Life oh, of David so Gale. Oh, well, Life of David Gale. Life of da- I never actually saw Life of David Gale, but I heard about the twist, and I'm glad I never saw the movie. Yeah. Well, what was it about? It was about a guy in the life of Gail. Gail. A guy is on death row and he's getting people to try and, uh, you know, get him off of death row because, you know, uh, he, he's totally against capital punishment and they're trying to save his life. And then it turns out he really did commit the crime just so he could have a, uh, a his day in court to try and overturn capital punishment. Yeah. What? So he killed he somebody have, to do that. He might have done it, done it, so he can get a pick of free meal. I mean, shit. <laughs> uh, let's see. Anyone else, real quick? I had the usual suspects. That twist was horrible. Oh, oh fuck! You oh, can leave it out. out here. You're wrong. <laughs> get out of well, here. Well played, Jim. <laughs> so it's right up there with Fight Club. Oh, that's a horrible <laughs> twist. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to do all uh, animated movies, but I couldn't come up with another one. And my daughter kept telling me that Cars 2 and Cars 3 deserves to go straight to hell, but I haven't seen them. Cars 2 is awful. Horrible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Twist. I had to make sure I seen all my movies, too. Yeah. Uh, Brian, did you have any? Um, I had... What did I have? Um, Varsity Blues. Uh, cause I really thought that he wanted his life, but then he didn't. <laughs> he really did uh, want his life. Uh. I, I really thought that he wanted his life, but he said he didn't. Maybe he said, maybe that's a twist. He's just saying he didn't, but he really did. I've never seen this movie guys. You've never seen I've, varsity blues. Nope. I thought that I thought the twist was that Bud Kilmer was supposed to be the good guy. <laughs> <laughs> and most coaches leave. don't get kicked out of the locker room by their team in at halftime to be coached by a player on crutches. Oh, sounds like a fantastic movie. It's really great, actually. I I have so many people tell me about this movie, and I probably should have seen it by now. But it's just like it's like Godfather. I just can't watch it. The oh, twist. The hook, the, they're the, running the, the, the hook and ladder. <laughs> I just did the hook and ladder. Uh, let's see here. Anything else, Brian? You good? Uh, I mean, I got a lot, but don't worry about it. You sure? Yeah. Okay. He, he hates all the twists okay. in Bedrock. It's very hard twist, to do a twist, twist correctly. Like, it... <sighs> we that ha- you don't see it, you're just like, this is amazing. It's normally... Nope, that's shit. Uh, real quick. Uma Thurman's twist was really good. That yeah. was a good twist. You're right. It was. It was a good but, fucking milkshake. But but was John Travolta's twist all that good though? No, no. They, had, they won the contest because they of Uma did. Thurman. Uma. <laughs> well, although, did Bruce. they win the contest? They got the trophy. They got the trophy and the needle. But apparently. There was a, was it a deleted scene or something or something that that said led you believe that they stole the trophy from the actual winners. Mm-hmm. Like or they are dirty, dirty thieves. Well, yeah, you can't put it past them. Uh, titles for the show? Anybody? Uh, I didn't write uh, it down. I've got a couple of them here. Uh, maybe that, but 
I've got pyramid schemes do work. <laughs> uh, sonic boom of silence. Hey, I got that one. Uh, sexy, sexy time. The crone is hot. <laughs> Is there a sexy time that isn't sexy? Yeah. Uh, there, there could be unsexy sexy time. It is possible. Okay. I, I've, I've not experienced this. And uh, Red Velvet Labrador. Mm. Opportunities for professional development. <laughs> Desiree Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> and Do Better. <laughs> Brian, you got anything? Uh, I didn't really uh, write anything down this week. Uh, Josh uh, can. Josh can. Josh Cat has no butthole. Good call. <laughs> um, Hobie colon. We're bigger than Clifford. Their big red dog's poops. <laughs> um, that comes from the colon. Gotcha. <laughs> you are super smart. <laughs> Hobie colon comes from the colon. <laughs> Um. <laughs> I like that, that is my vote right no, there. No, no. <laughs> comes from the colon. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, you could name it whatever you want, but when I say that I listen to this, it's going to be colon. <laughs> I had, uh, anything else, Brian? You good? Uh, no, nah, that's fine. Uh, I, had, I didn't write any. I honestly didn't write anything down. Uh, I it's had, just that witty, guys. I had Sonic Boom of Silence. Uh, I joined a pyramid scheme and plucking the eyes because of Blake. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's a twist. And in all honesty, uh, I like Brian's number two. There's no plot. (laughs) So his number two pick on top five. Uh, Brian or Jeff, what was that pyramid scheme you had? I had pyramid schemes do work. I do like that one. I like that one. What do you think? Pyramid scheme. I like the colon. Shut it, Jeannie. I vote for the colon too. Yeah. Hobie colon. We come from the colon. Yeah. It's a toady song. Uh, bad idea of the, the week. Col- we got to do apparently two this- bringing up colon. <laughs> we come from the colon. <laughs> we we got to do two this week because we didn't do one last week. So uh, bad idea. Oh well, I, uh, two of them are having a. New Orleans uh, swinger party in the middle of COVID, and the other is three thousand having a sorry three thousand a, a Burning Man, a Burning Man party in the middle of a, 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 a pandemic. Three thousand conventions in a pandemic. Three thousand two hundred eighty-one and three thousand two. I'm like, it depends on if you're really trying to like call the uh, the the uh, the the numbers here. These, the, let's be honest. We'll give them a wristband. They'll be fine. No, I'm, I'm all for that. You know, okay, well, if you want to do it, you get the wristband. We won't uh, pay attention to saving you. But when they come back and give it to their their mother who's, you know, sitting home alone for nine months because she doesn't want to catch it. And then her, her son comes back from Swingerville and gives her COVID. <laughs> that is the worst thing ever. Jason, I, I think the number, I think the number from... should be 2020. There you go, 2020. Good job, Adam. 2020 and 2021? Yep. 2020 and 2021. Yeah, there you go. And then the issue is that uh, Brian's uh, lovely wife has to work, you know, 87 hours in two days. So, you know, because people can't fucking put a mask on. That'd be uh, some type of uh, hours Real quick, um, the mask goes over your fucking nose, too, idiots. It should cover your nose, your mouth, and your chin. Or just don't go out. Well, now, wait a minute. What if my nose-to-chin area is too bigger than the mask? Hey, give me mask. measurements, and <laughs> I, will bring, I will make one for you. I heard that about the cheesecake this year, too, Jeannie. I don't trust you. Uh, Roger. Wait, I fucking brought a cheesecake when I offered one. <laughs> Can't hear you, Jeannie. Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. You've been listening to Hobie.